Here we go. Enjoy responsibly. Bud Light here in Hazard Bush, St. Louis, Missouri. KGOW. Bel Air, Texas. It's the game. Houston's best sports talk. Houston's best sports talk. Chevrolet goes to no-haggle pricing and 60-day returns on 2012 models. Volvo looks at three new safety features for cars, including pet detection. And we'll talk with an up-and-coming paralyzed open-wheel racer whose sights are set on the Indy 500. Those stories and commentary straight ahead on today's edition of In Wheel Time. If you were building a house, wouldn't you want to have Bob Vila at your disposal? If you were painting a masterpiece, wouldn't you want Picasso to give you a few pointers? If you're buying a car, don't you want the best automotive experts in Houston to help you along? Well, we've got you covered. 1560 The Game presents In Wheel Time, hosted by Don Armstrong and Mike Herzing. When it comes to the internal combustion engine, these guys know it all with the latest tips, trends, deals, and know-how. In Wheel Time has you covered, so sit back and buckle up, because In Wheel Time starts right now. And today's In Wheel Time is presented by our friends at Jeep. And good morning, Mr. World Traveler, Mikey Herzing. Hey, Donald. How are you, sir? Well, it's good to uh, have you here with us finally. How, it's good to be had. How, how was it to, to go a uh, quarter of the way around the world? It was great, uh, except for the flight. <laughs> I was going to say, how was that flight back? Uh, it was pretty brutal. It was about nine hours. Yeah. For those people that uh, are just uh, tuning in, don't really uh, know what we're talking about, Mikey took a nice trip. Uh, on the pocketbook of Subaru. Thank you, Subaru. Thank you, Subaru, uh, to go test drive a new thing called the Cross Trek that Subaru has coming out. We'll talk about that a little bit later, and we're also going to get into more of Mike's vacation slash working vacation. That's right. That's a lie. I worked very hard. That's a total lie. Oh, Don. Hey, Wheel News is sponsored by Ford and your local Ford dealers. Visit TexasFord.com and your local Ford dealers today. Talked about the uh, Volvo stuff that's coming? Yeah. Well, Volvo is touting three new technologies that it says will help make Volvos of the future a good deal safer. Autonomous driving. In other me to in, in, other words, in other words, you really just kind of point the car and let it do its thing. I think thing. I've done that before, but it's a whole different thing. Yes, it is, especially after the intoxicates. That's right. Uh, also, they have uh, intersection support and animal detection. They're working on all of this. Now, you wow. know, if any of this is becomes popular, yeah. you know it's going to happen. It will all, all have the car it. It's going to be yeah. Volvo, in a statement released earlier this week, said it's tailoring technologies to the way people drive, by which it means poorly. Yes. The company claims that surveys from three different research institutes here in the United States reveal that modern drivers spend 25 to 30 percent of their time behind the wheel doing other things, such as focusing on mobile communication. Swedish automakers' new technologies are said, they say they, they take all this into account and provide the driver with the right support at all times. This is according to Automotive News. Using a camera and radar, future Volvos will be able to follow the car in front while driving in slow traffic. Using an autonomous driving function, the engine, brakes, and steering will react automatically to the car ahead of the Volvo. If the vehicle swerves, then the Volvo will veer in the same direction. Wow. So they're all going to wreck at the trying, same time. Well, if they're going to try to avoid something in the road that you can't see. I know. It's a, it's a good thing. Yeah, I, I think. think. I'm not sure. Of course, you know, if the guy in front of you decides to uh, cut somebody off, I yeah, guess your Volvo is going to. I know. Apparently, they've got that worked out. Supposedly. Another safety feature, feature intersection support. Apply the car's brakes automatically in certain kinds of emergencies. They kind of got that now. You know, where. Yeah, it, they uh, do. Where it uses the radar on the, on the car. Right. And keeps the distance. You can actually follow people in traffic and never really touch anything. I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of cool. Well, yeah, it is, but I. I'm, but it also, it's, it's. Um, I don't know. It just kind of takes the power away from you. You feel a little weird about it. Kind of like when you're married. Yes. You well, get the power no, totally, totally taken, taken away, away from absolutely. you. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And you're never right again in your entire life. And then animal <laughs> detection, which I think is the, the real crux of this whole thing. It's an extension of all those pedestrian detection system. It's trained to recognize shapes and movement patterns of wild animals like you. Yes. Volvo did not mention whether the system would affect would be effective in preventing collisions with domestic animals. Accidents with wild animals usually take place at cruising speeds. Volvo says if it can reduce the speed of cars from about 70 to 50, when a wild animal is detected, the risk of serious injury will be reduced. 
Duh. Yeah. That would be great up in the hill country. It would be. Yeah. Well, work. actually out in the out by the woodlands, a little bit north up there, yeah. going to Huntsville when it's deer yeah. season, all of them running all over the place. Yeah, it would be hey, good. Chevy's offering 60-day returns and sets no-haggle pricing on 2012s. Well, they did that with Saturn with the no-haggle pricing, and, and it worked. Yeah. yeah it the, was great. Took them right out of business. No, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> I, think the, I think their product put, took them out of business. Well, uh, they're trying to appeal to new buyers, and uh, Chevy said that it will allow consumers to return any new 2012 or 2013 model for a full refund within 60 days if they're unhappy with their purchase. Yeah, that love it or return it. I mm-hmm. saw that on the. I saw a commercial about that. Yeah. Chevy also said it would offer lower pricing on all 2012s on top of other incentives. The auto re- automaker already has in place. Chevy promised one simple no-haggle price on all of its vehicles, I guess including yeah. Corvette, naming the promotion Total Confidence Pricing. And uh, as automakers begin to transition to the 2013 model year, Chevy is hoping to boost sales by drawing in shoppers who wouldn't have otherwise considered a Chevy while also improving the brand's long-term image. After gaining U.S. market share in 2010 and 2011, Chevy has slipped this year. Sales are up 6% through June in a market that has res- risen 15%. GM said the new promotion runs through September the 4th. It so might be a good thing. Let's just try. The problem is we're so used to going into a dealer and not really hearing their bottom price. It's like, oh, this is your going in price, then it means you've got room in it. And they really don't. So it's as long as all the dealers do that and you don't have somebody cutting somebody else's throat, then we're okay. So here's the catch. Yeah. All right. There was a catch. There's always a catch. Always a catch. Mm-hmm. If the vehicle was driven that fewer than 4,000 miles, has no damage, consumers will be able to return the vehicle for a refund of the purchase price and sales tax. Refund offer, valid between 31 and 60 days of taking delivery, does not include non-GM accessories, finance charges, extended warranties, or license fees. Oh, so you buy an extended warranty and you give the car back. Well, you've lost your extended warranty. Yeah, well, don't buy the extended warranty. No. Why would you buy the extended warranty right away anyway? Right. Well, because a lot of people want to finance it. Okay, well, whatever. Yeah, I know. I, I wouldn't buy the extended warranty, period, but that's okay. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not big into extended no, warranties. It's like, it's like Not when you got BG letting it, helping you with for free. That's right. Well, it's kind of like going to the Best Buy and, and, and buying a... Don't even go there. Don't even get started with the Best Buy. I don't even want to go yeah, there. $50... Well, I can tell you all kinds of horrible things about that. $50, $50 electronic goods. Yeah, and yeah, Well, right. would you like to have an extended warranty? It'll only cost you thirty nine ninety five. You've got to keep, keep, keep up with the paper, paperwork for three years and things like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Right. And they take back the receipt that's all faded and they can't read it. And then you go, okay, that's not a good thing. Got a great interview. All right. Uh, IndyCar driver Michael Johnson's story isn't just about racing to win. It's about racing to triumph over disability. Oh, yeah. This thing is amazing. And folks. becoming the first paralyzed driver to race professionally. Michael started as a motorcycle racer but was paralyzed from the waist down due to a spinal cord injury. And even as he recovered in the hospital from his on-track accident, that was on a motorcycle. Michael was committed to continue racing. He returned to compete and win go-kart championships and is now on the professional IndyCar circuit. Wow. And so the 19-year-old Michael drives the Coloplast 54 car in the Mazda Road to Indy Series. We got him on the line with us now. So, Michael Johnson, thanks so much for joining us today. I know that you're down at uh, TIRR, going to make a little uh, presentation down there and talk to the kids uh, in rehab. But give us a little background on you. How did you become paralyzed? Well, I started racing when I was uh, three years old. And to make things uh, short, I, uh, I kept racing ever since. On August 13th of 2005, I was uh, racing a flat track race in Darnia, Canada, and I broke my back. Ow. How, how uh, I ran out of tear off that was a half mile horse track, and I went through a wood fence, and I was paralyzed that instant when I uh, hit the handlebars. How have you been doing since? How was uh, how was rehab? Uh, rehab was was great. I, uh, I'm getting a lot back. I had a stem cell surgery in 2009, and between the rehab, the stem cell surgery, and my racing, uh, things are coming back. Well, good. I mean, do you have any feeling in your in your, in your low, lower torso? I do. Yes, I have full pressure. I can feel all my bones and muscles. I just can't feel like light touch on the skin. Well, that's that's fantastic. That's great news because I, you know, I was reading your story, a little bit of a background on it, and it is important for you to be able to feel the lower part of your torso 
So when the when the car uh, is is uh, plowing into the corners, understeering into the corners, I didn't realize that it was actually your lower torso that gave you that sensation. Yeah, absolutely. Anything I can feel um, when I'm driving the car, it, it helps my feedback to my engineer tremendously. And and so then you you feed that back to uh, your your chief engineer there uh, at the racetrack, and then they can make adjustments that way. Yeah, correct. Yeah, and and that helps my driving as well. Uh, well. I can feel bumps and every little surface change on the track, and it helps out. Well, let's talk very briefly about the series that you're currently in, leading up to uh, hopefully an IndyCar career. What is this series? This Mazda, the, the Mazda puts on. It's called USF 2000. Um, it's running a Mazda four cylinder two liter, and uh, it's basically the first step on the road to Indy. Well, I saw a video. As a matter of fact, we've got it up on our Facebook account, and we've also got it up on our website, the video that you shot with you driving the car. And I have to tell you, the thing sounds like a screaming V8. Yeah, it's, uh, it has uh, quite the sound of it. It's very it's fast. It doesn't have the, um, the fast acceleration as some of the other motors higher in the series, uh, but it's, it's quick. Okay, so how do you control the car? Obviously, we have to have hand controls, correct? Correct. Yeah, the the braking is all through the steering wheel. I just push in on the on the whole steering wheel, and it collapses the steering shaft, and that will apply the the brakes. The clutch is a lever that's down uh, down by my leg. It connects to the foot pedal, and I push in with my left hand. Uh, the throttle is a paddle on the left side of the steering wheel. Uh, right now, it's just a cable. Eventually, it should be uh, electronic. And the shifting is on the right side of the car, just like anybody else would shift. It's a HP engine gearbox, and uh, that's basically it. Wow, it's it, that that it sounds really complicated, but I guess after you get used to it for a while, it comes pretty natural. Yeah, a lot of the, um, the controls on the motorcycle on the handlebars really helped out with my coordination on this steering wheel. Well, it sounds fascinating. Now, where where are you in the standings in this series? Right now, I, I'm. I think I'm in the maybe 18th, 19th. I've had a couple of bad races. Um, the last race wasn't the best at um, Lucas Oil and Indy. Uh, but I'm hoping this next race, uh, the first week in August at Mid-Ohio, will be, uh, be really good. Okay, and that's a road course, obviously. Yep, that's a road course. Do you do, you do any circle track racing? Yep. my uh, The last race in Indy was an oval the night before the 500. Oh, yeah? And uh, that one was a little rough. I, I was in the uh, top, I think I was in the sixth, uh, third lap of the race, and uh, a bunch of cars were taken out, and I was one of them. Naturally. <laughs> you would have to be getting caught up in something like that. Well, yeah. Michael, it's great to talk to you, but I want to continue the interview. Can you come back with us next hour? Um, yeah, I can. Okay. So Michael Johnson going to be with us again next hour. It's a great interview. I think that uh, you'll want to stay tuned for that. Coming up here on In Wheel Time, it's our Keep It Running segment. Mike and I talk maintenance and mechanical issues with questions from the one and only Mr. Johnny Dipstick. Great to see you this morning. I see you got he's, your... He's got old, his dipstick hat on. He's got your old school hat on. Exactly. So everybody at home can see that. Wonderful to be here. Unfortunately, you're not on camera right now, but... Well, that's the way you guys wanted it. Well, that's true, but kind of. Okay. We thought... Because you're the right now... who didn't want you on camera. Right now, exactly. you're kind of a mystery voice. Thank you. So don't forget to visit us on Facebook and check out our website, inwheeltime.com. And we'd like to thank you for joining us this morning right here on 1560 The Game. Our intention when we designed the Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland Summit wasn't to win every single award. But when you include luxury appointments like soft to touch Napa leather-trimmed heated seats, and a hand-stitched leather-wrapped steering wheel finished with real wood grain, awards like Ward's 10 Best Interiors, and the Texas Auto Riders Association SUV of Texas come along. And it doesn't stop there. Once people begin to take notice of the French stitched dashboard, door armrest and center console, and the breathtaking views from the command view panoramic sunroof, well, more accolades keep coming, like the highly coveted luxury SUV of Texas. Before we knew it, the Jeep Grand Cherokee had become the most awarded SUV ever. And all we had set out to do was craft a luxuriously capable SUV that excelled on-road and off. 
Features described are standard on Overland Summit and available on most other Grand Cherokee models. Jeep Grand Cherokee has received more awards over its lifetime than any other SUV. Jeep is a registered trademark of Chrysler Group, LLC. Engines and vehicles today are vulnerable to carbon deposits that can build up in fuel injectors, intake ports, combustion chambers, and on intake valves. Even the smallest amount of carbon can produce increased exhaust emissions, reduced gas mileage, drivability problems, and engine knock. Clean fuel systems create better fuel economy. That's fact. With only one tank of fuel and BG44K gives a total cleanup. BG44K restores mileage and boosts performance. In one professional application, specially formulated BG44K Power Enhancer thoroughly cleans fuel systems, restores gas mileage, and increases engine performance. See it at the pump, feel it on the road. Ask your service representative to install BG44K in your gas tank today. Found at over 15,000 locations nationwide. You won't find BG brand products and services at discount stores. They're only available from an authorized BG service center. For a shop in your area, go to BGfindashop.com and enter your zip code. We don't just make a performance sedan. We make the Cadillac CTS-V the fastest production sedan in the world. We equipped the CTS-V with a pavement-peeling, 556-horsepower, supercharged V8. We didn't just engineer a brilliant suspension. We created a dual-mode magnetic suspension that reacts faster than the blink of an eye. We didn't just give it powerful brakes. We gave it six-piston Brembo brakes with locomotive-like stopping power. The Cadillac V-Series, the record-breaking CTS V sedan, stunning CTS V coupe, and audacious CTS V wagon. We don't just make luxury cars. We make Cadillacs. Visit your Houston area Cadillac dealer or log on to HoustonAreaCadillac.com. There's only one show in Houston that gets your automotive wheels turning. The guys are bringing you the latest in automotive news, reviews, maintenance tips, and everything that will help you get down that road called life. Now, let's get back to the guys. Here they are, Mike Herzing and Don Armstrong. Had a great Saturday morning to you. It's even better because it's not raining, at least here at the station at the moment. It's been raining all week long, so... What can you say? I mean, it can't get any better than that. You're listening to In Wheel Time with Don and Mike here on 1560 The Game. Time now for our Keep It Running segment, where we give you tips and answer your questions about vehicle maintenance with our own master of mechanical mayhem. mayhem. Absolutely. Johnny Dipstick. That would be me. In Wheel Time's one and only. And our Keep It Running segment today is sponsored by GM. Let's get right to the questions because they're piling up as we speak ah, here are. Uh, from the Internet. They are, and this is pretty awesome. We'll you don't, you don't, you're not on. Your, your microphone's not on. Well, there it is. Sorry. There it is. Uh, okay. Thank you. you guys are doing everything to keep me off the show today. We are trying our we best. We are doing our best. All right. Well, n- next week, no cupcakes. First question. Yes. Very important question from Mr. Jeff Zietzen at American Tire Centers. Yes. He writes in, with all the heavy rain, when would be a good time to fertilize the lawn? Mike, do you want to handle that one? I think that would handle oh, when the garden show comes on. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Is there a garden show here on the I station? Know, there Jeff, ought to be. Jeff, you have us mistaken. We are a car show. I think that they are growing some weeds. Jeff is Jeff is a few fries short of a biggie fry. Speaking of weeds and Jeff, but we won't go any further. All right. Now for the real stuff. Why does my brake pedal pulsate while applying the brakes? Actually, the rear the rear brake rotors are warped. And that would be the problem. If, you, if your front brake rotors are warped, your steering wheel will, will shake a little bit when you're driving on and you apply the brakes. But if it's your rear rotors, it'll make your brake pedal. How can you pulsate? have the rear rotors bad and the front rotors okay? How does that work? Yeah. Well, the, actually, the rear brake rotors are, are so much thinner, and they, they can warp, too. They, I've had people do it. Or if you're driving along, and you, maybe depending on the vehicle, okay, if you leave your, your parking brake on and drive it, the rotors will get hot. Some vehicles don't use the actual cal- the same caliper for that, but some vehicles do. So I don't know which vehicle it is, but I know that what hap- that happens. And you know what? If anything can be screwed up, people can screw it up. It's just the way it is. Yeah. And I also heard that in other... You can normally just get it machined and they'll take care of it. Right. And in other, other cases with normal braking, it could be that the lug nuts on your wheels have been tightened unevenly. It could. So that could be one of the things. It doesn't happen very often, but, boy, you'd have to tighten them up so they almost break. Yeah. Which, Which I've Mr. Dipstick do. has done and why yeah. he always takes it to a professional. All right. Uh, hello, Mike. 
I have a 56 Ford Fairlane with a 292 engine and an automatic Fordomatic transmission. Wait a minute. A Fairlane? What year? 56. 56. Cool. With a 292 right. engine and an automatic Fordomatic transmission. <laughs> I've recently changed the input seal on the transmission and the O ring on the front of the torque converter next to the engine. The torque converter is leaking fluid. Wondering what I should do next. Should there be a transmission fluid in the torque converter if there was no leak? Thank you. Well, actually, the torque converter is it holds the fluid, and that's how it how it how it drives the transmission. That's where it get, gets its its pressure. Um, so it has to have fluid in the torque converter. Obviously, though, a lot of times people will change the front seal, and they really need to rechange the bushing also. And so, if the if the torque converter is not fitting real tight and it wiggles at all, it's going to make it just leak as if you didn't even put the seal in it. Huh. So probably most of the time the seal goes bad. I mean, obviously, this has probably been redone a couple, two or three times at 1956. Really? Yeah. You Just think? two or three? At least. Um, but check the bushing. If the bushing's bad, then the seal is still going to leak. Well, here's the simple answer times? to it. Here's the simple answer Take to it. Take it to a transmission you've, shop. You've, no. You've got, you've got a bad case of the Don Armstrong repair job. <laughs> and let somebody else fix it for you because you don't know what you're doing. That's the bottom oh, line there. No. I just, well, you know, yeah, I've known that for he years. He just missed a piece or two. That's all. There's a couple steps that they left out. You know, when I was uh, playing Corvettes with all of my repairs and, and, and customization and stuff like that, uh-huh. I'd take something off, and I'd always have bolts and nuts left over. I'm thinking... Wonder where all of those went because I couldn't find where they went. That way you'll have a Corvette light to be one third less parts. Is <laughs> yeah, that it? That's right. I did that once with my former father in law. Uh, we were living in Corpus and we we did a transmission on a vehicle one afternoon. It was a two six pack project, as he referred to it. Uh-huh. And we had several parts left over and it still worked fine. Yeah. It's amazing. So, I think being a good mechanic is overrated, don't you? I do. Okay. Mike, since you're just back from Hawaii, we're going to throw an easy one at you. Is there a way to repair a rock chip in a windshield instead of replacing the whole darn windshield? Sure, you can if you do it quick enough. That's the problem. Ooh, what do you mean? You've got to do it within the few days because dirt will get down in the in the, basically the, the cracks of the windshield and get in down between the laminate. So you need to get it done. And they put a, a resin in there that will take care of that. And huh. if you get it done, the quicker you get it done – the better the repair will be, and you get to the point where um, uh, you won't even see that it's there. So, you know, sometimes you'll see people that, that will get a repair done on the windshield, and it looks like it never even happened. And, right. and then sometimes you can see a little little kind of a shadow there, and there's a difference between any kind of dirt getting in there. Can you trust those places you see along the side of the road, like up and down West Hammer them, and Highway not, not all of them. Not all of them. No, you can't. Most not, of them, they'll do it when it's wet. They'll do it when it's dirty. Well, they'll... They're just not honest. How can you tell if those roadside places are going to rip you off under the umbrella? You know, I really don't know. I think you probably ought to go to some place through your dealer or someplace like that that would do it. How well, about Tom? How about, we can ask Tom Chorba here from Speed Emissions. Tom, have you ever had any 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 kind of dealings with those kind of deals? Yes, we do. Actually, Mister Sticker, well, uh, there you go. Up on 1960, uh, they do do windshield repairs. We do have a kit. We can uh, nine times out of ten, it's an insurance claim. Insurance companies will pay for the repair. Instead of replacing a windshield, okay. Now is that something also? So if it's dirty and if it's and if it's gonna not going to be a perfect repair, you're going to tell them that it's not going to be a exactly. perfect repair. There exactly. All right. That's all you ask. And for. so while we're while we're here and yes, <clears throat> talking about windshields, that uh, inspection stickers and mm-hmm. and license uh, plates are now stuck to. How do you handle that if you replace a windshield? Do you have to go get a new inspection sticker and a and a new uh, license yes, registration? Do. They are not transferable. But they but do not, it anyway. I, yeah. No, they don't. Not the not, ethical uh, places. Ah. Not the ethical places. Thank you. You're welcome. Man, so, I, I mean, you don't have to re-up your registration sticker again, do you? You have no, to pay no, again? It costs you a dollar. I think, it cost, co- I think it's the dollar. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think Mike, it's only a dollar. dollar for that one. You just have to it's have a replacement, replacement. sticker. And you just take them and say, okay, well, I had a new re- windshield put in. I need another sticker. Yeah, you just get hold of the state, and they mail you another one. It's no big deal. Oh, okay. Well, Mike had his shop. He used to have drawers full of those That's stickers. That's right. Oh, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, it's interesting. In the state of Texas, though, you know you have to have wiper blades, but it's windshield is not a requirement. That's right. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the windshield's not a requirement, but it's you got to have wiper, wiper blades. blades. It has to have wiper blades. <laughs> oh, my God. I've learned something new See, every time is, you come in, Tom Chorba. Yeah. This is why you need this show. Yes. 
Exactly. Okay, what, right. what's our next question? Okay, Mike, I've got a 1998 Dodge Intrepid with 151,000 miles. It started to puff blue smoke after idling at red lights for a few minutes, and then it just died. It's got minor cover leaks, and the car run, runs strong. Could this be a bad valve guide? I've always changed the oil every 3,000 miles. I also have a minor lifter tick also. You had that done once. Yes, Sir John's I, had that. I still a have a lift slight lift tick. Tick. He has a okay. lift, lifter problem, yes. So should I get a valve job, or what do you guys think? Thanks for your help. Uh, actually, you should it's get a valve job. Selfie. It's going to take care of it. You do have either valve stem seals or valve guides. Uh, the fact is that it, that it does it when it's running. It's probably valve guides, but, uh, you know, you need to have it looked at. For the uninformed, uh-huh. yours truly, what's a valve guide? The valves go, you know, in and out. Like this. This is and radio, Mike. And there is, point. I know. I'm, well, it's not radio. It's also, you know, it's also video. <laughs> what it is is it's theater it's, it's of the, the mind. Sleeve, it's you know, you it's could the need sleeve to re- that the valve stem is in. Could you, that, could that you rephrase the valve goes that? In now. It's okay. the sleeve that the valve stem sits in. Thank you. And okay. it has to have pretty cl- tight clearances. Otherwise, the vacuum will pull the oil down into the combustion chamber, and that's what happens. I can't wait to see him describe the... That process. But. Yes, we don't want to go there. <laughs> All right. Haven't had enough cupcakes yet. That you know, one. and I don't even have any toxic cakes yet this morning. <laughs> no. oh, we were God. telling the story about Don's no, no, four or no. five okay. intoxicated. Okay, here's another one. Oh, this one is so interesting. I had a neighbor who bought a brand new van. I got up early one Sunday morning and saw that some vandal had spray-painted red paint all around the sides of this white van. I went over and told him the bad news. He was very upset. I was trying to work out what to do. But when another neighbor came over and pointed out uh, that he should go get some WD-40 and clean it off, it uh, removed the unwanted paint beautifully and didn't harm the paint that was on the van. How in the world did that happen? How WD-40 takes it's, paint off a it's vehicle? It's one of the things it does. There's a uh, matter of fact. There's all these emails that go around how the original, how how they designed it. Uh, back in the, I guess it was the 50s or 60s. 55. And, uh, yeah, there you go. I was I was kind of a child then. Don was, I was in high school, but still, uh, I was a child, just a mere toddler. Anyway. And the WD stands for water displacement. That's right. And it was and the 40th formula. Exactly. And uh, there's so many things you can use it for. Oh, yeah. Uh, clean, cleaning your hands and doing this. You know what the major major ingredient in WD-40 is? Yes, what I would, do. Yes, you do. What would that I be told him, for the rest of us? Fish oil. Fish, fish oil. oil. Good for your heart. And what is our what is our stuff. trivia question of the morning? And by the way, to read all about that WD forty, go to our in wheel time Facebook page. Well, because Sonny Potit, the drag racing legend, is a special guest on the yes, show this uh-huh. morning. I researched and came up with Sonny Potit trivia questions. So here's the first one: How or what did Sonny Potit have to give in trade to get his fifty five Chevy Bel Air? Was it? A pair of jet skis, two customized golf carts that were gifts from Bob Hope, a deer lease, or a new bass boat. Da, 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 da. Okay, well, well, can we answer that when we come back? If you remember to. Well, you're going to help me. Oh, all right. All, all right. right. So in the meantime, while we, ponder, show, while we ponder that. A pair of jet skis, two customized golf carts from Bob Hope, a deer lease, or a bass boat. Okay. Hey, In Wheel Time is proud to present our in-studio guests a free BG oil service with MOA along with BG Carbon Fighter 5, and you can get a free oil change too. All you have to do is email your name, phone number, and zip code to info at In Wheel Time, and you'll be entered to win. Next time you need a coolant flush, transmission, power steering, differential, or fuel service, be sure and ask for BG by name. BG products are used by the best dealers and service facilities around including Clear Lake Dodge and Webster, Classic Auto Group in Galveston, Buckaloo, Chevrolet in Conroe, Honda Cars of Katy in Katy, and Quick Car on Broadway in Galveston. Learn all about BG products at bgfindashop.com. Hey, if you've got a question for us here at In Wheel Time, be sure and shoot us an email, info at inwheeltime.com. Coming up, it's toy time. Nifty 50's Randy Shannon talks hot rods with, as Mr. Dipstick just mentioned, his special guest, Sonny Boteet, and Houston Performance Driving's Troy Dixon gets with it on the street and track. That's next on In Wheel Time with Don and Mike on 1560 The Game and streaming to your digital device via InWheelTime.com. We now return to a Chevy dealer near you. You okay, Kyle? You look pretty wore out. I had the craziest dream last night. We were here at the dealership offering qualified customers 0% APR financing on all 2012 Silverados and Traverses. Uh, that's not a dream. It's happening right now, Kyle. It's truck month. Really? Yeah. What about the part where my arms were espresso machines and I fell asleep inside the butter dish? That was a dream. And there was the $2,000 allowance on eligible trade-ins. That's reality, all month long. And I had that little dog made out of nachos. 
dream. The coverage on the Silverado was amazing. Reality. And then I ripped off my shirt and demanded a raise. Oh, yes, that was Tuesday. Was anybody else here? Oh, everybody was here. It's truck month, for real. Visit your local dealer for details. Length of contract limited, not available with some other offers. Excludes leases, must show proof of current ownership and trade in a 1999 or newer vehicle. See dealer for details, take delivery by April 30th, 2012. Call 1-800-950-CHEV for details. IQ Auto Buyers buys wrecked vehicles. Had an accident? Don't spend $5,000 in repairs and end up with the same old car. Sell it like it is and buy another car. Call IQ Auto Buyers at 713-456-3196. Mechanical problems? Transmission gone bad? Need an engine? IQ Auto Buyers will buy your vehicle in its present condition and pay you on the spot. If you have insurance, you can keep that money too. The process is simple and painless. Call 713-456-3196 or go to IQAutoBuyers.com. Hey, the towing is free, you get paid on the spot, and it usually takes 20 minutes or less. IQ will not try to sell you anything. All they do is pay top market value for your car, truck, or motorcycle regardless of condition. Call 713-456-3196 or go to IQAutoBuyers.com and sell your wrecked car today. IQ Auto Buyers, the smart way to sell your car. Have you ever heard of anyone going small? We haven't. And we're almost certain no one in Texas has. So when the Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland Summit received accolades such as luxury SUV of Texas, Ward's 10 Best Interiors, and the Texas Auto Riders Association SUV of Texas, we knew it was because we went big, really big, especially with our luxurious interior. From its soft to touch, Napa leather-trimmed heated seats, to its command view panoramic sunroof, to its black olive ash, burlwood accents, and chrome details everywhere you look. Needless to say, we're truly honored to represent Texas. But honestly, we couldn't have done it without following their motto, go big or go home. The Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most awarded SUV ever. Features described are standard on Overland Summit and available on most other Grand Cherokee models. Jeep Grand Cherokee has received more awards over its lifetime than any other SUV. Jeep is a registered trademark of Chrysler Group, LLC. Don't know the difference between a V6 and a V8? Can't find your dipstick? Or are you just nodding your head when your mechanic tells you you need a new auxiliary timing chamber? Not to worry. The guys from In Wheel Time are here to help. Call Don and Mike and they'll give you the lowdown on all your automotive needs. Now, let's get back to the guys. Don Armstrong and Mike Herzing. And you're listening to In Wheel Time with Don and Mike here on 1560 The Game, presented today by Jeep. This is our Toy Time segment where we talk about custom cars, modified street rods, classics, muscle, race cars, and antiques like me. Today's Toy Time is sponsored by Ram Trucks. And the answer to our question, what did Sonny Poteet give and trade to, for his 55 Chevy Bel Air? The, the suggested options that you have a pair of jet skis two customized golf carts that were gifts from bob hope a deer lease and a new bass boat i was going to guess a new bass boat but the answer is a pair of jet skis skis. is that right that's right all right well thank you and uh just to give everybody just a little bit of background on uh sunny just let me give you this uh sunny was born dayton texas and he raced from the late 50s for about 10 years until he had a family and once the kids were grown He cranked it back up again at the young age of 60. And you're only 62, so it wasn't that long ago, right? Right, right. Uh (laughs) Sonny enjoyed his 55 Chevy for the past 18 years. He races, cruises, shows the car often, including a run with the 2003 Hot Rod Power Tour, driving over 2,400 miles using 247 gallons of gas. This 55 has a blown 502 cubic inch engine in it that runs up 716 horsepower. It currently has 28,000 miles on the engine since 2003. I'll with us to. today from the uh, Nifty 50s Car Club, as always, is Randy Shannon. Randy, it's always good to see you. And really, My pleasure. Really appreciate always. you bringing in uh, Sonny. Well, he's a legend in the Houston area. And, and his own far. mind. In his oh, own yeah. mind. And, and, his and own everybody mind. is, too. <laughs> Sonny is a household name in the street round world, of course. Uh, he's uh, He's been to a... a whole lot of shows not only in the houston area throughout texas i guess across the nation sonny is that correct right, right. he's this 55 chevy when you say sonny poutine and the 55 chevy you automatically have a connection there this is an awesome car that sonny is still building all the time is i have one question for you sonny before we get started is your wife listening today 
she she can. I, I unplugged all the. I took the power cords to all the radios and, 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 and took her car and took the power cord. I was waiting for you to say she divorced you 15 years ago over she, this car. She, she will when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> Sonny, uh, you was telling me a story, an interesting story about uh, you went and bought some. Uh, what were these? Slick tires for the rear, right? Your drag racing tires. 21 inch wide tires. 21 inches wide, not tall. 21 inches wide, right. we're talking about here, guys. And you and the wife thinks you only gave $35 a piece for that's them. Right. Is that I bought them used, $35. $35. Huh? And we know that's uh, that's not quite right. Just a little bit off. Well, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit off. <laughs> and, and the motor itself, you said you had about what? $800. $800 in this $800 motor. $800 in this. My uh, friends, this the blower alone would cost you what? The belt cost you that much. $800 <laughs> for the belt, yes. But the wife knows it's only $800 in the motor. <laughs> Sonny is a trip, guys. Let me tell you, he's been to a lot of car shows. I know you participate with the Space City Cruisers and our friend Bob Wright. You've been, you're from Paraland. Right, right. So tell us about what happened. In, was it in Paraland? You were telling me the story where uh, the law got you? No, I was down in Texas City area. Well, I was doing a little few burnouts, and a place I was to come around the corner and, and caught me doing a burnout. And that's part I'll do a, like a funny car burnout. It will literally lay down some smoke. and. Lady come around the corner and says, you know, she pulled me over and said, you know, she took my driver's license, she chewed on me a while. She said, you know, this is not a, a ticket offense. This is a go-to-jail offense. All I can think about is some record driver hauling my car off. <laughs> and she said, give me one good reason why I shouldn't take you to jail. Cause I'm, I said, because I'm an old man. She said, that's a good enough reason. She, said, <laughs> she let me go. <laughs> so I've got a question for you, sir. Go ahead. How, have you always had this passion for hot rods? Uh, almost all my life. I guess when I started driving, about nine or ten years old. Is that right? And what, if you don't mind me asking, when was that? Back in the forties. In the forties. Yeah. So you you got the car bug back in the nineteen forties, and uh, I guess you obviously brought it home with you, and uh, and and you've had it ever since. No. So <laughs> I just I just I've only had this car about twenty years. No, I know, but you've had you've had the bug for oh, right, for all these right, years, right. and you know this is a. Uh, for those that Troy Dixon's sitting in here, we're going to get to Troy in just a minute. But I was looking at the pictures here. You do really magnificent work. Well, thank this, you. This is, this is uh, absolutely phenomenal. Right. I mean, the that's, chrome, the chrome yeah, underneath that, the That's hood. the $800 motor. That's a motor. show car. I, I mean, it really is. It's a show car, but it's you a, drive every, yeah, drive it, every day. It's, it's a 10-second car with air conditioning, power steering, power brakes, DVD player, and TV. But, but Sonny, the real true hot rodder back in the days, does, they did not have air conditioning. So what, what caused that to happen? My wife, she said she wasn't. That's the first thing I had to put in it. She before the blower, the air conditioner come first. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're telling me, okay, you take these power tours, and the wife is not going to go with you unless unless you have AC in this uh, hot rod. That's right. So how did I mean? What doesn't that bug you though? No, not really. It's okay. It's I, okay. I like her being with me. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. a, a, after the tour or whatever, you you take the air conditioning off or no? You, I'll leave it on. Oh, do you? Or she might want to go uh, again. Ah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with a gun to your head. I'm going, whether you like it or not. I I still like this thirty five dollar tire. That just blows me away. Yeah. Uh, you know, for some reason, I think that you're pulling our legs. Oh, he no, is. No, that's the truth. <laughs> I, I tell the truth. Yeah, yeah he, he told the truth that that's what he told her. Exactly. That's not the truth of what it cost him. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, I've got a feeling she has a pretty good idea of the amount of money that you spend on this. I think she knows, but she she mm-hmm. don't uh, she don't say much. Well, you know, it keeps you out of trouble. That, well, mm-hmm. I was going to say it keeps you out of trouble, but apparently not. But for the most part, it keeps you home anyway. Exactly. Well, yeah. that's that's the mis- mistress in his life. The 55 shift. The fi- yeah, there you go. Well, that's a good one. Yeah, that it I'll, is. I'll say. Well, and, it's a beautiful it, car. And okay. we're going we're gonna to get uh, Johnny Dipstick to put this up on the website for those of us that are, are listening to us right now. And uh, we'll, yeah, get, we, we'll, get yeah. some, we'll get some pictures up there Folks so everybody can see these things. Yeah. This is an awesome car. I assume that those pictures are on this uh, DVD. Right. No, that, that's, that's, a, that, that's actual. actually a video from the racetrack. That's from video from That'll this, work. That's video yeah. from inside the car at the racetrack. Where there's a lot of smoke. Where there's a lot of smoke. <laughs> and you really can't see Sonny too well. But hey, it's great to have you here. Randy, I can't thank you enough for bringing this guy oh, in. Not a problem. We'll uh, we'll be back next hour. We're yes, gonna, okay. We're gonna talk and, some and, more and about yeah, it because we have a lot to talk about. That was our next question. Can he yes. bring him back next hour? Yes, we have a lot to talk about in a short period of time. So we'll we'll expand on uh, Sonny Poteet. Okay, very Thanks, good. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna kind of switch seats here. Yeah. And we're gonna bring in. I'm not uh, sitting in your lap again. If that's what you mean. <laughs> you know, even though you've lost that weight, it is it's a little bit <laughs> okay, uh, good. Uh, cumbersome, especially while we're on TV, because you know we are streaming live. 
Uh-oh. Uh, We're in uh, trouble now. It, yeah, it is. So, Randy and uh, Sonny are going to make way for Troy Dixon. And let me tell you about uh, Troy Dixon. Troy Dixon uh, runs a group of guys that, along with Randy Shannon in that same vein, yeah, he's but got a thing it's called the same the but different. Performance, Houston Performance Driving. Right. And It's a uh, different HPD. It is that a we're normally used yeah. to. And so, uh, welcome, and thanks for coming in today, Troy. Thank it, you, gentlemen. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. So your deal is a little bit different because these guys are working on classics and basically pre-79 hot rods and customs and all of that sort of stuff where you are actually on the street with a lot m- newer vehicles. and Exotics. And, uh, exotics, and as, as well as all of the latest hot rod stuff. That's correct, yeah. We really focus on the up-to-date high high performance. We're talking about thousand horsepower street cars uh so we've uh you know from all the way from the lamborghinis to the italians to the, the domestic muscle as well yeah well what are the domestic muscles these days because i i'm pretty much out of touch since uh, 1973 Besides gto or something yes. Yes. right right well right now you know the heavy hitters are uh, still you know like the zr1 and z06 uh the, the nissan, corvettes right yeah mm-hmm. the gtrs from nissan shelby the vipers uh you know and everybody's really excited about 2013 especially with uh, oh, the, the new, new viper, viper. Oh. and then the new uh shelby gt500 that's going to come out with over 600 horsepower straight from the factory i mean that's going to be incredible so 2013 is going to be an exciting year for the performance world so but the, besides those you also have guys that have fairly late model cars that when they rolled off the factory line might have had 300 horsepower, but these guys go out and, and they actually do the real homework and get down in there and get dirty and, and really pull the horsepower out of these things for a few bucks. Oh, it's, it's uh, absolutely sky's the limit on this. These guys get together, and they're the funniest group of people because they all want to one-up each other. So when somebody got to 600 horsepower, somebody says, well, I'm going to seven. And then seven became eight, and then eight became nine, and they were on four. And so it became this competition on the streets of Houston to see who could get, you know, the now 1,000 horsepower is now the new standard in certain circles. And it's not to say that they race these things on the street, because these guys have, uh, what, do they, what do they call them, uh, tuner, tune-up deals on Saturday at, at, at some... Uh, at, they have some, track days. Right. And, and track days, well, but they also uh, check horsepower and... Bring it, bring it in. They'll you bring in a dynamometer and things like that, right? right? Well, nowadays, what you what they're what the popular thing to do is things like the Texas Mile, where you they've rented out an entire airstrip because these cars, um, you know, have such high horsepower that they need the room to run, and therefore it's a it's a controlled environment, just like being at a drag strip, right. but it's a much longer, obviously, a standing mile, and that's become the new popular thing to do is to see how fast you can go in a standing mile. So how do you find out about how to get into this stuff? Oh, it's all over the uh, the websites is what you want to do. You definitely want to get on to HoustonPerformanceDriving.com. Uh, we're on Facebook. We've also started a new uh, venture called Performance Driving Network, um, and it's going to be a very global website for you know everyone in the world to enjoy performance driving. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's how you get on there. Definitely Facebook and coinciding with the forums where you can get on there, create a profile, post, uh, create an identity, and ask these questions. And the people that are involved, the coordinators, are all on these sites to tell you where to go, when they're going to be, how often they are, how do you register, how much they cost, all the all the details that you're going to need. Well, I know up. when I was yeah. in the Corvettes of uh, Houston Car Club, that was a big thing among us. We all shared information. It's right. not as if it's some big kept secret. And one of the real attractions to becoming involved in a club or an outfit like yours is the sharing of information and the camaraderie. You all share this one goal, this one hobby, and um, you love to talk about it, kind of like this radio show. We all love cars, and we all have a passion for them, whether they be new sitting on the showroom, or like you said, the new 600-plus uh, horsepower Shelby GT Ford. Or, uh, or the 55 Chevy. Or the 55 Chevy, uh, or Sonny Poteet. You guys appreciate those yeah. cars, and especially him. I mean, this guy, he was the four... He was your grandfather that right. was the hot rodder, right. you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, it, it's really interesting to get into uh, the sport of, of uh, car love. Yeah. yeah. It, I don't know how else to it, put it. it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fraternity. It's, uh, it's kind of, but it's nice to be able to also, you can, you can get cut deals with plate pieces and places and things like that. There are special shops that are doing something that the other places aren't doing it. You guys can point people in the right direction. Hey, this guy is doing some really good work. Go to see him. You know, you can you can talk to people like Ken Lingenfelter, like Ken, that the uh, Donnie and I went and talked to, and 
and uh, see, find out you know the gurus about horsepower. There's so many things that you can do, and the more people you have, the better it works. Yeah, Mike, you're right. You know, especially with HoustonPerformanceDriving.com, you know, the website has it right there on the page, all the shops that are involved. And if you need a particular build or a particular car needs to be built, um, we have the shop and we can guide you in that direction. And the shop owners are on the website. Right. So if you need to ask the shop specific questions to kind of feel them out, find sure. out what kind of shop they are. Are they a good fit for you? That kind of stuff. Exactly right. right. Absolutely. Exactly right. And, you know, we've been very blessed and fortunate to have Houston's top speed shops all combined together and see a value in HPD. There are a lot of sh shops. Now, do you guys have regular meetups? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We have a monthly meetup. We have track events. Our monthly meetup goes to our uh, these shops, and so they're a kind of a night meet where – you got. We hang out. We get the dynamometer machine out, and we register all of the cars and see how many, much horsepower they can put down, and have a competition and see who put the most horsepower out throughout the night. We also have uh, photo shoots going on right next to that with uh, beautiful car models, and then people can bring in their cars and have them shot with the models, so they can go home and put these pictures up in their man cave and enjoy the experience. That works. And we and we shoot live video. <laughs> Don's got an idea now. <laughs> we shoot live video of these uh, events. The Scion we, IQ he's driving. He can see the model <laughs> next to it. Well, he was really uh, throwing that Genesis around in the parking lot when I followed him in. I was uh, I was like, wow. I said, he's had some serious track time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but um, uh, the car is fun to, to, to manhandle around. Well, it, it's, uh, it's a fascinating uh, story. How many guys show up uh, to these? tune-ups oh you know it just depends um you know some some are more private for you know uh you know particular forum members uh shop sponsors and things like that but we can have anywhere between 50 to 200 people and then i also host like you know uh, galveston cruises where we run from houston to galveston and enjoy that i'll have i've had 300 cars show up to those things and get to lake jackson and completely shut down the town um, and then get police escorted out, obviously. <laughs> but uh, not because you're doing free. anything bad. It's just that they got they don't know what to do with 300 yeah. uh, hot rods. Right. Yeah. 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 I think they get a little bit overwhelmed, but uh, they're professionals and they they actually help us uh, out of the town and just get on our merry way to get to Galveston Island. So, um, but we also have uh, drag events, quarter mile events, uh, night and day races over at uh, Lone Star Motorsports Park, which is John Hennessy's track. Right. And he's a sponsor of our websites mm -hmm. and a big spot, a supporter of us. And so um, our night race is midnight thirteen twenty, where we uh, do like the good old fashioned street racing style, where we get a you know beautiful girl out there and start doing hand drop racing. Um, and then we have trophies and classes and things like that. And then we have a day race called Judgment Day, which basically is just a day race a, a version of that. And then we have North Side versus South Side, where we uh, take you know the, uh, the good city of Houston, we split it in half with I ten going east and west and Everybody on the north side of uh, I-10 races everybody on the south side of I-10 and kind of gives the town a little bit of a uh, com you know, competitive uh, sure. you know, fun time. And then, uh, and then on top of that, we um, media our, our media team gets out and completely chronicles other people's, other clubs' events, um, like Texas Speed Syndicate. They've got a really uh, neat deal going on right now with the drag strips, with the airstrips, excuse me, where they've got 1,000-horsepower cars doing side-by-side -side racing on these big, long airstrips, getting up to almost 200 miles an hour, depending on the vehicle. And so we go out there with our team and chronicle these things and videotape, interview the guys, and make these really neat videos and then post them on our YouTube channel, which has just completely taken off. And we are very fortunate to have, um, at times, in the statistics of YouTube, sometimes we rank number three automotively, under YouTube, there's uh, Top Gear, and then there's um, Motor Trend Magazine, and then there comes us right behind that. So we're... let's talk some more next hour. Sure, absolutely. Hey, it's great to have you here. We really appreciate it. Uh, it's a whole education. Uh, just walked in the door. Yeah, no kidding. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Troy Dixon with Houston Performance Driving. Coming up, road trip and drive at home. We're tripping it to Plano of uh -oh. all places, and we're going to have reviews of the 2012 Infiniti G37 and the Acura RDX. You're tuned to In Wheel Time with Don and Mike on 1560 The Game. All hat and no cattle. That's a polite way of suggesting someone talks a good game but doesn't deliver. A caution. Not to fall for flash when what you really need is faithful. To see what something's made of before you put your trust in it. Take the Ram Heavy Duty. Available with the proven 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel engine. 
It'll tow whatever you ask of it. And a five-year, 100,000-mile promise that it'll keep towing every time you ask. There's a truck that's earned its reputation. Guts, glory, ram. Do not exceed towing ratings. See dealer for copy of Powertrain Limited Warranty. Ram is a registered trademark of Chrysler Group, LLC. In Wheel Time is proud to present our in-studio guest, a free BG oil service with MOA along with BG Carbon Fighter 5. And folks, you can get a free oil change too. All you have to do is email your name, phone number, and zip code to info at inwheeltime.com and you'll be entered to win. The next time you need a coolant flush, transmission, power steering, differential, or fuel service, be sure to ask for BG by name. BG products are used by the best dealers and service facilities around. You can always learn about BG products at BG. Findashop.com. We don't just make a performance sedan. We make the Cadillac CTS-V, the fastest production sedan in the world. We equipped the CTS-V with a pavement-peeling, 556-horsepower, supercharged V8. We didn't just engineer a brilliant suspension. We created a dual-mode magnetic suspension that reacts faster than the blink of an eye. We didn't just give it powerful brakes, we gave it six-piston Brembo brakes with locomotive-like stopping power. The Cadillac V-Series, the record-breaking CTS V sedan, stunning CTS V coupe, and audacious CTS V wagon. We don't just make luxury cars, we make Cadillacs. Visit your Houston area Cadillac dealer or log on to HoustonAreaCadillac.com. Got a question? Give us a call at 713-439-1560. Now, let's get back to our resident auto pros. Here they are, Don Armstrong and Mike Hersey. Oh, yeah, it's in wheel time with Don and Mike. Time now for a new feature we call Road Trip, where we get you on the road with a destination for an overnight weekend or week-long trip for your motoring pleasure. Road Trip is sponsored by American Dream Vacations. Mikey, I know this is going to sound weird to you, but we're going to go... We're going to go to Plano, Texas. Well, that's not a bad place. It's a fun place. It is a fun place, and here's why. Because I didn't realize, you know, it's a, it's a little town just north of Dallas. Sure. Okay? Um, it's a great gal weekend, and we know that we got to keep our gals happy. It's only four hours away. Uh, they've got a huge balloon festival coming up September 21st through the 23rd. So it's a little it's more than... and flat. It works good. It, it's a good it's, area. Yeah. It's Texas's largest hot air balloon festival. And I thought the ballooner uh, thing down at NASA was the biggest one. No, this one is. They've got music, nightly balloon glows, kids zone, fireworks. You can also go up there and visit the South Fork Ranch. As a matter of fact, I've been there. I have too. And and they're back there shooting uh, on new episodes of Dallas again. Yes. That, uh, I don't know what channel it's playing on, but um, yeah, JR is back. I think he died five years ago, and they just put some kind of silicone in him or something. <laughs> There's also the North Texas Automotive Museum. I did not know that that, that was up I did there. Not know it was That's there. in Plano. They also have the thing called the Heritage Farmstead. Okay. Four-acre museum preserves life from farm prosperity in the 1900s. It's a 300-acre farm operated by a local resident. You can go visit. That would be a hoot to go see that. Yeah. Billy Bob's Texas is up there. Oh, that's kind of fun. That's the world's largest honky-tonk since Gillies is no more. Uh, you can always go to Dallas and visit the Sixth Floor Kennedy Museum. That's fascinating. You ever been there? Yeah. No, that's, I haven't, actually. That's very good. You need to go see that. Uh, you can go to the West End Marketplace after you take the kids to put them to bed, and hopefully with a babysitter. Uh, you can also take a podcast walking tour. Uh, and you can pick that up on TravelTex.com. Uh, you can also enjoy Texas Charm at Forever's Resorts, South Fork Hotel, which offers complimentary shuttle service to South Fork Ranch and anywhere within a three-mile radius, or the bold new modern appeal from the Aloft-Plano. Kind of neat. This is from our researcher, Maddie Woody, and we certainly appreciate her uh, doing that for us this morning. Okay, yes. it's uh, time to check on our... Vehicles of the week. Let's drive it home. Mikey's got the Infiniti G37. Well, yeah, actually, think of it as the cousin of the 370Z. A little bit, a little bit more refined, 
uh, with a back seat, sort of. And uh, this one is the IPL, which is the Infinity Performance Line. They call it the G Coupe. It was the this had a six-speed manual transmission. You can get that, or a seven-speed automatic. You know, G37 is one of my favorite luxury sedans, but the Coupe is really just as good. Uh, it, it really earns my admiration. They've done a great job, and the best part is it's it's rear-wheel drive. It's got a great balance. It handles good. It's really comfortable, but it's very refined. Now, granted, it's a little bit more expensive than the than the 370Z, but it handles just as good. It runs just as good. It's got 348 horsepower. You've got your manual transmission that I had. It was just great. It runs good. Fuel economy is 17 in the city, 25 in the, on the highway, but you don't buy it for that. You buy it because this thing is just a sharp little car. It's, it's a perfect guy's car to just kind of go crazy with. It's got all the the electronics you need to keep you from getting in trouble unless you want to turn off the traction control. And if you turn off the traction control, I promise it goes sideways really easy. Uh, How would you know that? Because I can do, I've done it. It's, it's great. It looks – now, the, the, they, they've gone with this IPL, the in, in, you know, Infinity Performance line, yeah. and added a lot of neat front and rear fascias and, and some big exhaust tips. But, folks, if you, if you want a, a, a neat – no. now, of course, this is the same price as a Corvette. Really, it runs about fifty thousand dollars, a little bit less than fifty thousand dollars. So, yep. But somebody might be interested in something with a couple extra seats, a little bit more refined than the Corvette. This might be the vehicle for you. But check it out. It's the Infinity G thirty seven IPL Coupe. Got a little SUV from the fine folks at Acura. Uh, it's the RDX All Wheel Drive Tech. Base price on this is thirty four three twenty. It has the Tech package, which adds five thousand dollars to it. Uh, It includes the navigation system with voice recognition, uh, communications Acura Link, real-time traffic and weather, the ELS surround sound system with 10 speakers, hard disk drive, GPS linked, dual zone auto climate control, and the list goes on and on. That's a $5,000 add-on. I love the new body shape. Not much different from the outgoing model, just more refined. Still has that ugly Acura beak on the front of it that I'm not too thrilled about. But all in all, it's a pretty good, uh, nice-looking truck car SUV. Uh, inside, luxurious, uh, wonderfully soft, perforated leather, leather and with uh, easy-to-read gauge cluster as well. Going to give it a four and a half stars out of five for the Acura RDX. That's it for this hour. Stay with us. We've got more in real time right after this break. Always wondered what it would be like to take the family camping in an RV? Wonder no more as American Dream Vacations has all types and sizes of RVs for rent. Whether you'd like one for an overnight stay at Huntsville State Park or a one-month road trip across America, American Dream Vacations has an RV that fits your needs and your budget. From one convenient location on I-45 North just outside the Beltway, American Dream Vacations can help you select a pop-up camper or motorhome that's just right for you. Hey, if you're planning a trip to an out-of-town race, to the hill country for a weekend of tubing down the river with friends, or a birthday or holiday celebration that'll be a carefree, fun time, think American Dream Vacations. Hey, if you already own an RV that sits in storage most of the time, American Dream Vacations has a plan that'll help you pay for it. Just give them a call. Instead of putting your money in airplane tickets, rental cars, and hotels, do something different and fun for a change in an RV rental. Go to AmericanDreamVacations.net or give them a call at 281-872-9200. American Dream Vacations. IQ Auto Buyers is the smart way to sell your car. They buy cars, trucks, SUVs, even motorcycles in any condition. Had an accident, mechanical problems, car in bad shape, IQ buys wrecked and disabled cars. Call 713-456-3196 and don't stress over repairs. The process is easy and fast, so fast you could do it over your lunch hour. Call 713-456-3196. One of their friendly buyers will appraise your car, give you an instant, free, no obligation quote, and pay you on the spot when they pick up the car. Fast, efficient, and they do all of the paperwork. The process takes only 20 minutes and the towing is free. IQ Auto Buyers wants to buy your car, truck, or SUV, or motorcycle for top dollar. Whether you owe money, lease, or own outright, IQ can purchase your car. So call them today. IQ Auto Buyers, 713-456-3196. IQ Auto Buyers, the smart way to sell your car. We now return to a Chevy dealer near you. You okay, Kyle? You look pretty wore out. I had the craziest dream last night. We were here at the dealership offering qualified customers 0% APR financing on all 2012 Silverados and Traverses. Uh, that's not a dream. It's happening right now, Kyle. It's truck month. 
Really? Yeah. What about the part where my arms were espresso machines and I fell asleep inside the butter dish? That was a dream. And there was the $2,000 allowance on eligible trade-in. Well, that's reality, all month long. And I had that little dog made out of nachos. Dream. And the coverage on the Silverado was amazing. Reality. And then I ripped off my shirt and demanded a raise. Oh, yes, that was Tuesday. Was anybody else here? Oh, everybody was here. It's truck month, for real. Visit your local dealer for details. Length of contract limited, not available with some other offers. Excludes leases, must show proof of current ownership and trade in a 1999 or newer vehicle. See dealer for details, take delivery by April 30th, 2012. Call 1-800-950-CHEV for details. General Motors plans on hiring thousands of people for IT development and database development. Assembly plant north of Chicago brings jobs for the entire community and who said the government bailout was a bad thing? Plus, we'll have part two of our interview with paralyzed racer Michael Johnson. We got those stories and commentary on today's edition of In Wheel Time. There's only one show in Houston that gets your automotive wheels turning. The guys are bringing you the latest in automotive news, reviews, maintenance tips, and everything that will help you get down that road called life. Now, let's get back to the guys. Here they are, Mike Herzing and Don Armstrong. Today's In Wheel Time is presented by Ram Trucks. And a good morning to you, Mike Herzing. Boy, the time is whizzing by. <laughs> yes, it is. Had a lot of guests last hour. We got more this hour. It's going to be a great, fun-filled, action-packed, hour-long In Wheel Time. Of course, we've got two more hours to go of the show. But this hour, we're going to talk about uh, some news. First of all, GM is working to bring most of its IT work in-house. Yeah. And, you know, most, Not a bad of the, thing. most of the car makers in the past uh, 10 years or so have delved out yep. all of their stuff. Well, they're bringing some of that back, and one of them is IT, which is huge. Uh, GM, a pioneer in outsourcing information technology, this according to Automotive News, said it's beginning to reverse that trend with plans to at least double the number of in-house IT experts over the next three years. If you're an IT guy that's out of work here in the Houston area, you might want to consider moving back to Detroit. GM now outsources about 90% of its IT services and provides 10% of that work in-house. Within the next three to five years, GM hopes to reverse those percentages in part by hiring thousands of thousands of new software developers, database experts, and others globally. Wow. So you don't, you don't necessarily have to go to Detroit. You could go to Beijing or London or some yeah, other exotic Arlington. place. Or Arlington. There you go. IT overhaul is spearheaded by GM Chief Information Officer Randy Mott, who outlined the plan to GM's 1,500 IT employees. Mott came from Hewlett-Packard, and he believes that the moves will make the largest U.S. automaker more efficient, and ultimately more productive. Some elements of the overhaul take five years to implement, but they're starting right away. GM will set up recruiting at universities to support its hiring binge, but it's unclear when that process will begin. So if you're an IT guy, GM well, is your They're already hiring person. engineers, uh, as many as they can get, so there Can't you go. You can't get them fast enough. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, remember, uh, the whole automotive industry has been going global for quite some time, and now here in the U.S., because of the upsurge in sales, and the demand for automobiles, because we had such a, a right. backlog, people wanting new cars. Several and years, it's going to be <clears throat> yeah. a lot. So, uh, also, Chrysler Group's, in, in the same vein, Chrysler Group's factory in Belvedere, Illinois. And, you know, it's funny because when I go to visit family up in Wisconsin, I always fly into Chicago. Right. And uh, I take the freeway from Chicago up toward Madison, Wisconsin, Janesville, Wisconsin, uh, Beloit, that sort of thing. Well, you go right past the Chrysler factory in Belvedere, Illinois. Remember the old Belvedere? Yes. Yes, well, there you go. Old oh, Belvedere, come here, boy. Come here. <laughs> well, I think that they used to make a car called a Belvedere. Yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, this Belvedere factory not only makes the new Dodge Dart, but they make a couple of other uh, Jeep models as well, the Compass mm -hmm. and the Patriot up there. Well, they're shipping about 300 Dodge Darts a day right now, and that's expected to increase dramatically. As yeah, they, they ramp need a lot more up. than that. It's uh, just a mile east on Route US-20. There's a new restaurant has added an assembly line of its own, one that makes steak sandwiches up there, and they can't make those fast enough because of all the people that they're hiring at the Belvedere plant. So, you know, everybody is uh, bitched and complained about the fact that, well, the U.S. government bailed out the auto industry. Can you imagine what this country would yeah. be? What, what a, Besides that, when the money that, they, that we lent them, they paid it back with interest. Yeah, but uh, can you imagine what it would be like if we had let General Motors and Chrysler go down the toilet, 
we would have so many people out of work because most people don't think that uh, the auto industry entails millions of people that support the auto industry. One out of ten jobs in this country are related to the automotive industry. Yeah. So can you imagine? It would be really bad news. So really glad to see that Chrysler is doing very well, and uh, that's just one of the stories uh, that of countless stories that talks about how you know a plant that at one point just a few years ago only had 200 employees now has 1500 and they're going to add more here in the near future at that one plant alone so it's good news for all of them last hour we were talking to paralyzed indy car driver michael johnson now he wasn't paralyzed in an automobile he was paralyzed racing a motorcycle okay and yikes Yes, he was paralyzed racing a motorcycle, and after uh, he was paralyzed at the age of 12, he moved into autom- automobiles, and uh, he's really kind of caught on and has a real knack now for this open-wheel style of racing, i.e. leading to IndyCar, and he's currently in a Mazda road racing series. You know, you got to go through steps to right. get up to the top, and this is one of them, and we had a, a wonderful conversation with him last hour. And Michael joins us again this hour on the phone. Michael? Well, Michael, you kind of gave us a background last hour about how you became paralyzed and your current racing uh, career in this Mazda series. So this is kind of the road to the Indy 500. And what other steps do you have to go through to get to the next step here uh, toward Indy? Well, the next step would be Star Mazda. Uh, That runs another Mazda motor. The next step would be Indy Light. Uh, which is basically IndyCar, but it's a little bit smaller. And then, of course, we have uh, the Premier, which is IndyCar. So you've only got a few more steps to go. And, and so uh, do you feel confident you can do this? How, long is it, how much longer is it going to take? Uh, absolutely. I think it's very, uh, it's very possible, and I'm really excited. Uh, we're planning on being an IndyCar maybe 2015, 2016. Wow. So, and, and, I mean, have you got connections in IndyCar already? Uh, well, my team, JDC Motorsports, they're very connected with all their uh, all their series, all their um, high connections with all the IndyCar teams. And um, I, I'm hoping I can stick with them throughout my whole career. Well, you're only 19 years old, so I would imagine that you've got a few years to, to, to burn here and get, get a little experience under your belt. Yeah, I, I have a few years um, to get my experience and really uh, really show everybody what I have. Okay, now let's uh, let's talk for instance uh, a little bit more uh, in the engineering aspect of it. Tell me what kind of Mazda engines these are. Four cylinders, I know. How many horsepower are they built for racing? Uh, they're built for racing. Uh, the motors are spec motor. Um, to be honest, I really don't know what the horsepower is, uh, but they're uh, all the all the teams have the same exact motor. Okay, are they, um, are they sealed motors that you can't mess with? Correct. Yep. The the series does all the all the tuning on the motors. Um, we have very little changes we can make to the even the transmission. What so, what can you make? Uh, can you make any kind of suspension changes or adjustments? Yep, we can make all the suspension changes we want. There's a certain uh, limit we can go, um, but all the aero changes and everything we can make. I see. And and so, what kind of crew do you have? Obviously, these guys do they have full time jobs or or do they work on the car all the time? Yeah, we have uh, the crew is a full time this year. Um, they of course have other other um, jobs on teams when they're not with us. Uh, but the the team is great. My engineer I have right now is a team owner, which is John Church, and then my mechanic, uh, his name is Ed. He's uh, he's perfect. He knows exactly what. What I need, what I need to get in and out of the car, is uh, to tighten the belt. He's uh, he's perfect. And and where do where do you, where could I see the series race? How how could I learn more information about the series? Well, you can go to the USF two thousand dot com, and uh, there uh, there's all kinds of links and everything about the cars, about the teams, the drivers, and uh, you can go to my website michaeljohnsonracing dot com, and it has more information on there as well. Well, we wish you the best of luck. It's a, it's really a, a great story that you have to tell, and uh, we, you, if you make it to the Indy 500, you'll be the first uh, a disabled person to actually race in the in the Indy 500. Correct? Correct. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping to be the first paralyzed driver to qualify and even win the Indy 500. Yeah, I know that. You, I don't know of a race car driver that isn't really into winning the actual race. Well, what are you doing here in Houston this uh, this weekend? Well, I'm uh, I'm going to a rehab center, 
and uh, I'm with Coloplast. The rehab center is uh, TIRR, and uh, it's going to be fun. I'm going to talk with a bunch of the bunch of the patients there. My race car is going to be there, show them the hand controls, show them it's possible. Your life's not over, and uh, you can have a lot of fun doing it as well. Well, very inspirational. It's great to talk to you, Michael, and the best of luck. And let's stay in touch and see how you do at the end of the season. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Michael Johnson on the line with us. Coming up here on In Wheel Time, it's our Keep It Running segment. Got a maintenance issue you want to challenge us with? Mike and Johnny Dipstick, who's with us. And if you're watching our live video stream, you can see Johnny in his fine-looking chapeau. There's a name for you, a chapeau, My, uh, Mr. Johnny. That's Chapo. Okay. That's, that's kind of got a Tex-Mex uh, little yeah. thing to it. Okay. It's, not, it's Shaps. Not so Chaps. Mike and Johnny Dipstick are going to trade Q&A. And we invite you to join us on Facebook and be sure and check out our website. It's called InWheelTime.com. You can see us live video streaming on Ustream right now. We've got a link on our website so you can see us. We're waving right now. And you can also get an audio feed as well. And you can also get uh, any of our archive shows on InWheelTime.com. Back on 1560 The Game right after this. Sometimes you can tell a lot about a horse by what it's named like its color. It might be blacky or roany or buck. A name could have something to do with a horse's temperament or its disposition, like wild man or roller or bad bob. Yeah, the name of a horse is sometimes the name of his game. It's kind of like driving a ram truck that name means something. It means you know the value of dust, sweat, and pride. Guts, glory, Ram. Ram is a registered trademark of Chrysler Group, LLC. Having mechanical problems and don't want to hassle with the auto repair shop, IQ Auto Buyers buys broken down vehicles and will pay you on the spot. They're not trying to sell you anything. They just want to buy your car in any condition and give you money. That's it. Plain and simple. Call them 713-456-3196 and get paid today. IQ Auto Buyers process is easy and hassle-free. Call 713-456-3196 and speak with one of their friendly buyers. They'll appraise your car, provide an instant, free, no obligation quote and pay you when they pick up the vehicle. Or go to IQAutoBuyers.com to arrange a quote. Fast, efficient, they do the paperwork and it only takes about 20 minutes. Don't lose their number. That's 713-456-3196. Don't stress over your mechanical problems. Call IQ Auto Buyers, the smart way to sell your problem car. IQ Auto Buyers, the smart way to sell your we don't just make a performance sedan. We make the Cadillac CTS-V, the fastest production sedan in the world. We equipped the CTS-V with a pavement peeling, 556 horsepower, supercharged V8. We didn't just engineer a brilliant suspension. We created a dual mode magnetic suspension that reacts faster than the blink of an eye. We didn't just give it powerful brakes, we gave it six-piston Brembo brakes with locomotive-like stopping power. The Cadillac V-Series, the record-breaking CTS-V sedan, stunning CTS-V coupe, and audacious CTS-V wagon. We don't just make luxury cars, we make Cadillacs. Visit your Houston area Cadillac dealer or log on to HoustonAreaCadillac.com. Let's get back to the guys the automotive professionals turn to. Don Armstrong and Mike Herzig. I feel so close to you right now. Thank you for joining us this morning here on In Wheel Time with Don and Mike on 1560 The Game. Time now for our Keep It Running segment where we give you tips and answer your questions about vehicle maintenance and repairs. We try not to get too complicated with all of that, but sometimes Mr. Johnny Dipstick really doesn't quite get some of the questions, so... He, think, he talks about things like seals in the transmission yes. that 
I, I as opposed to seals in Afghanistan. That's two totally different. Or seals oh. at the zoo. Or seal team six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See where this is going. Let's not even go there because no, I better, know where this is going to go right down the toilet. Yeah, real I know. Quick. Um, hey, keep it running today is sponsored by our friends at B G Products. Well, Johnny, it's always good to see you. I haven't seen you all see week you. long. Well, except for last segment. Last segment, of course. Yes, you were but for those people that are just joining us, they don't really know. And speaking of people who are just joining us, I wasn't nervous till I saw how many followers we have on our video streaming this morning. Yes. 2,500 people are out there, folks, so you better be are good. Are they followers or stalkers? Uh, or a well, little bit of both. The one that called you a giant panda. I, I like love that one. That one. <laughs> I love that one. And so, uh, by the way, uh, we're endangered. Before, before we yeah. before we get into all of this, we want to uh, welcome Mr. Tom Chorba with Mr. Sticker, who has joined us today to help with our uh, Johnny Dipstick uh, segment called "Keep It Running." And we also want to welcome back Mr. World Traveler Michael Herzing. That's right. Mahalo, mahalo. Yes, I hope that, that's I not a bad say, word. Keep wanting to say "Hola," and it was "Aloha." No. Yeah. <laughs> Close, but no, no cigar. Okay, Johnny, let's get to it. What, All what right. kind of questions we Angie got? writes in, my horn stopped working. Is it really necessary to have this fixed? Is there something I can check? Yeah, like go ahead and put in one of those train whistles that'll scare the bejeebers out of the person. Well, I'll talk you. to Tom about that. Can you put in one of those train whistles, those train horns? Well, state law says you can have them. You can have the train horn, but are they legal? No. The horn must be fixed and audible for 200 feet. Well, that well, would be train, two miles. Train, train horns could be, be yeah. very good for two miles, but yeah. uh, you just you can have the train horn, but you just can't use it. It's, it's not legal. Yes, correct. sometimes so you, yeah, it'll it'll break all the noise ordinances. Well, I think what we could do windows and scare the bejeebus out of you when you're behind it. Right? I'm thinking maybe just park it in the parking lot and have it hooked up to a very sensitive, uh, some sort of a, 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 a you know burglar alarm. Mm-hmm. So when anybody bumps it, it goes off. There you go. Exactly. You think? Uh, so back to Angie's question. Do yes. you really need a horn on your car? And if so, how should you get it fixed? Yes, she does need a horn to pass the uh, state inspection and emissions test here in Texas. Now, a couple things that she can check real quick would probably be a fuse, right, Mike? Yeah, uh, fuse. fuse. And horns are pretty low, usually behind the bumper or in the grill. So they have a tendency, you know, especially with high water we've had this week, to, to fail. Mm-hmm. They, they go bad. Mm-hmm. And so... That's something that you that a, lot, a lot of cars have to change out. Now, you could uh, exchange it out for an Ooga horn. You can do that as long as you can cool. hear it for 200 feet. 200 feet. So if it's not the fuse, then it's probably something in the electrical connections? It yep. could be. Yeah, okay. you could double check that. All right. Okay. So And it could just be the bad horn or corroded wires. So. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, Angie, do what we do. Take it to professional. They'll tell you. All right. Randy writes in, my car had a bad jump start with wires being crossed. That's I've had my wires crossed pretty much all my life. Yes, okay. I understand. All right. Now the instrument panel gauges, the power windows, and the air conditioning don't work. What's the problem? Let's just hope that it's, uh, depending on what was on when they jump-started it crossways, um, is where you're going to have a problem. I've had cars that did four or $5,000 worth of damage when they hooked up the battery wrong. However, hopefully that's not it. You want to you check your fuses, your main fuses, and, and fusible links and things like that. So you need to really get it to somebody that knows what they're doing to look at it. Could be the body control module it has a problem now, but let's hopefully... What is the body the control fuse. module? So basically what? the computer that runs all the body ah. stuff, like okay. that helps you, that tells your windows to roll up automatically and all that good stuff. I see. Yeah, whenever... The computer. The computer. When polarity reverses, it's never a good thing. Never a good Just thing. Just ask right. Batman. Okay. Yes, ask Batman. <laughs> My new car has been in the shop several times now for the same problem. What recourse do I have to get a new vehicle? What are the lemon laws in Texas? Well, they're pretty tough. Sometimes you have to go in. It has to be in for X amount of days, and, and they have to have tried to fix it. You know, I think it's around 11 times or something like that for the same. It's, it's not as easy as you think to get another vehicle. It really isn't. Yeah, something about it has to have been in the shop for at least 30 days. 30 days. Together. You know, added up. Sometimes it may be over the life of itself. And then then there is times like that. The base thing is just work with the Better Business Bureau, work with the dealer and the manufacturer, and let them get somebody down here that knows how to fix right. it. There's That's a, the problem. Autosafety.org, I heard. They've got a list of all the lemon laws for every state. Safer car and things like that, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Safercar.org. Org, I believe, or dot gov. Okay. Safercar.gov. And always remember to keep detailed records because you will need them yes. if you ever have to go and file on that. Okay. Uh, here's <laughs> after the rain we've had this week, 
Billy wants to know, if I'm buying a used vehicle, how can I tell if it's been in a flood? Tommy, do you know, give him a couple of ideas there? there there's one there, yes. Uh, we have, there are so many applications out or apps out uh, on the market today, a good app to verify any safety reasons. You mean a phone app, you mean? Yes, okay. a phone app for your iPhone or iPad. A good phone app is Carbonga SRI. And SRI standing for Safety Recall Information. Carbunga. How do you spell that? C-A-R-B-O-N-G-A. Carbunga. It's a $1.99 app. Visit the app. It tells you all the safety and recall information on every vehicle out there. Oh, that's good. Okay. But as far as checking it for a flood, look in the trunk. Remember right. how we used to look in the trunk, see if there's any water lines Pull the carpet there. up, see if there looks any water lines or it looks like any rust. Look at the seat rails, mm-hmm. uh, which are the, the, the tracks that the seat go on. Also, and on a warm day and the windows are rolled up, open it up, and if you smell any of the, the, the smell of mildew, you'll hit it. I don't care what they do to these cars. For, for a long time, it'll have that, that dirty sock smell, mm-hmm. and, and it's hard to get that to go Gross. Away. It is. It's really nasty. Well, you know, the other thing, too, is on a hot <clears throat> day, you have the windows rolled up, and a lot of times the moisture will appear on the inside oh, of the sure. windows. That's if it's Absolutely. freshly flooded. Yes. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, because it, it takes a while to get that out of there. Mm-hmm. You have to put a dehumidifier in the car with the windows rolled up for a while, and uh, it'll, it'll help that. Okay. So, yeah, there's a lot of ways. All right. Andy wants to know, he said, I was told a serpentine belt should last 50,000 miles or more, but on my car, I had to replace that serpentine belt twice last year. What could be the problem? Usually it's the tensioner or one of the idler pulleys, but the tensioner is something that, that, that a lot of people, a lot of schools of thought are you change the tensioner, it's the idlers and tensioner, you do that uh, every time you change the belt. Which is a little wheel that is spring-loaded that keeps the belt tight. Absolutely. For those people that don't know. And there you go. Excellent. All right. Here, can, 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 I, can I interject something here? Sure. Because I think that you hit on something that I think that would probably be good for us to kind of talk about just a little bit more, yep. and that would be flooding because a yep. lot of people this week had their cars flooded. Sure. Probably for the first time because yeah. mm-hmm. usually it only takes one time and you learn not to get your car in that situation again. Oh, yeah. But, you know, there's more things that can happen to your car under the hood and places that you normally don't check, even though it's still running, that you might want to check, like, the transmission. Yeah, you want to check the differentials. You want to check the transmission. Just have the fluid checked. They can look at it, see if it's milky, if it's got any damage to it. Transmission especially, because the problems you have with transmission is with that moisture that's in the fluid, once it starts, you're driving the vehicle, it starts to, to, to steam itself out. That steam takes the, takes the clutch material off the plates. It steams it off, mm-hmm. which is a bad thing. Uh, You'll end up with all the bearing failures and things. So basically, flush your transmission, flush the differential. Then you, you, what you'll have farther on down the road, sometimes if you go through high water, and I mean just curb deep water, the, some, of, some of the vehicles, the AC compressor is down low. Well, what happened is the bearing for the clutch will get the, the grease washed out of it. Your alternator bearings will go bad. Your starter bearings will go bad. All the stuff that has, that has grease in it. And then what's worse is, is your brake calipers, the caliper slides that that locate the caliper uh against the rotor they will freeze up so what happens is your brakes will last five more thousand miles and they're done and the calipers are frozen up your brakes won't work as good not quite as good you won't notice that except just huge brake wear same thing with rear if you have rear drums same you're going to notice accelerated brake wear and you don't want to do that so basically you take it into a shop have somebody pull the calipers off replace the lubricant on the slides Put it back together, and your brakes will last normally. And for those cars that have a rear wheel drive, right. the differential would be another that's place we to talking, check. That's the very thing that we talked about diff at first, but also also wheel bearings. Like if you have a truck or something, yeah, I'm going through all this water. I'm being being Mr. Man because I'm going through this high water. Well, guess what? It's going to wash off the wheel bearings, and so you got to go and repack those. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck on the side of the road in another few thousand miles. If I can add something, Mike, that you had said last segment about that pulsating brake rotor. Right. Remember when you had said, Mr. Dipstick? Is yes. the fact that it could have been gone through high water, right. warp that and rotor. And then it, it makes the brakes overheat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't release right. Is the problem is because they're corroded. And that's a problem. And there's special brake grease that you have to use. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Okay. So, so by we, the way, huh? we hope that we answered 
questions about I that. I think you. If you got a question, you can always email us at info at in real time. Uh, we'll talk a little com. bit more about uh, flood, okay. flood stuff next segment. By, by so, the way, Tom, do you know a hour. woman named Antoinette? Yes. Okay. She says she's your wife, and she just commented on the video cast that you're as handsome as ever, and she loves you. Oh my God! Oh. But moving along. Now I got to cook dinner tonight. Okay. Uh, let's see. That's his, just his Houston wife. That's not counting as the de- okay. oh my God. <laughs> Frank wants to know, I have to constantly tighten the drive shaft bolt on my 94 Ford Mustang. How do I remedy this so I don't have to keep? I don't exactly know what he need when he means, whether it's the U-joint bolts or the pinion, where the pinion goes in. But either way, okay, if you constantly guess. have to mess with it, then you need to get it looked at. It's got a problem. Well, uh, a lot of times on the, on the pinion, you will go into the differential. If you that you tighten that to, to set the bearing. So if you over tighten it, it's just going to crush the bearing and cause a problem. So you shouldn't be messing with that. Okay. Also, you stake it so it doesn't come loose, and he may not be doing that. Ah, okay. So have it looked at. Take it to a professional. Yes. All right. Because it's the, really expensive. Okay. By the clock on the wall, it's time for the Sunny Poteet trivia question. Sunny Poteet's going to be our guest next hour. And, That's right. Uh, Drag Sunny, racing legend. Yes, he and is. Not just in his own mind. Yep. Uh, the question but, is. One of Sonny's additions to his car was a custom-designed bow tie fuel cell made out of polished stainless steel. What happened at a car show a few weeks after he had this install that caused Sonny to think that maybe that wasn't such a good idea? I don't know. I'm, I'm not a clue. What are the... Do we have no. choices? Mm-mm. No. 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 What we'll have to ask be psychic. Sonny. Yeah. So okay, we'll so. give you that answer when we come back. All right. Hey, if you've got a question for us here at In Wheel Time, as I mentioned earlier, shoot us an email, info at inwheeltime.com. Coming up, we got Toy Time. Nifty 50's Randy Shannon talks hot rods with local cool cat, Sonny Poteet, and Houston Performance Driving's Troy Dixon. Get you into the street and track scene. You're listening to In Wheel Time with Don and Mike on 1560 The Game and streaming around the globe via inwheeltime.com. This is Mike Herzing for BG Products, the first name in quality fluids to make your vehicle last longer and perform better. Did you know ethanol speeds up corrosion in your fuel system? Government policies are pushing more ethanol in your gas tank. So now is the time to protect your vehicle before any damage happens. You need BG Products in your vehicle for better performance, longer life, and improved fuel economy. BG CF5 has patented stabilizers to prevent fuel corrosion and keep your entire fuel system clean. Just use it each time you change your oil. It's that simple. BG products are so good, they offer a free lifetime protection plan just for having regular service. It's like extending the warranty on your vehicle's engine, transmission, and more. This is unmatched in the industry. Protect your fuel system from ethanol damage. Get BG CF5. And don't forget the BG protection plan for the lifetime of your vehicle. It's even transferable. To find a BG dealer near you, go to BGFindAShop.com. That's BGFindAShop.com. Why do drivers come drive for waste management? Lots of opportunity. It's a large company with great benefits. I thought it would be a uh, good place to start a new career. I like working with all the guys, seeing them start at the beginning and the grow to have a career like I've grown to have a career. And what about you? It gives me the opportunity to pay the bills and have a steady income. All across the country, Waste Management is hiring experienced and entry-level CDL drivers and mechanics. Men and women who are ready to grow with one of the nation's fastest-growing companies. Earn competitive pay, great benefits, paid safety training, and even employee discounts on things your family needs. Plus, Waste Management offers full-time daylight schedules so drivers can be home every night. Apply online. Go to WMCareers.com. That's W. WMCareers.com or call toll free 1 877 220 5627. That's 1 877 220 5627. Determination, challenge, commitment. That's how we roll. Waste management is a safety first, equal opportunity employer. We now return to a Chevy dealer near you. You okay, Kyle? You look pretty wore out. I had the craziest dream last night. We were here at the dealership offering qualified customers 0% APR financing on all 2012 Silverados and Traverses. Uh, that's not a dream. It's happening right now, Kyle. It's truck month. Really? Yeah. What about the part where my arms were espresso machines and I fell asleep inside the butter dish? That was a dream. And there was the $2,000 allowance on eligible trade-in. Well, that's reality, all month long. And I had that little dog made out of nachos. Dream. And the coverage on the Silverado was amazing. Reality. And then I ripped off my shirt and demanded a raise. Oh, yes, that was Tuesday. 
Was anybody else here? Oh, everybody was here. It's truck month, for real. Visit your local dealer for details. Length of contract limited, not available with some other offers. Excludes leases, must show proof of current ownership and trade in a 1999 or newer vehicle. See dealer for details, take delivery by April 30th, 2012. Call 1-800-950-CHEV for details. There's only one show in Houston that gets your automotive wheels turning. The guys are bringing you the latest in automotive news, reviews, maintenance tips, and everything that will help you get down that road called life. Now, let's get back to the guys. Here they are, Mike Herzing and Don Armstrong. And welcome back to In Wheel Time with Don and Mike, presented today by Ram Trucks. This is our Toy Time segment. We talk about custom cars, modified street rods, classics, muscle cars, race cars, antiques, you name it. We talk about it except for garden. We don't we don't do gardening in this particular segment. I love toy time. You, you know that. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely love toy time. This is a this is a unique opportunity for. We created this just for you. I know you did. I love you for that, Don and Mike. Randy Shannon with Nifty Fifties yeah. joins us for this segment with his special guest, Sonny Poteet. Today's toy time is sponsored by General Motors. And last hour. We kind of kick things off by giving a little background on Sonny. And just to kind of recap, Sonny's been a hot rodder since the 1940s. And we'll just say the late 40s, okay? Right. Because we don't want to make you too old. I no. mean, you can still walk and talk, and That's it's looking right. good. So you've done, you've done quite well. But he, he has one of the most beautiful, as we like to call in the business, sleeper cars. Yeah. I like to call yeah, it understated. Sleeper. It's a 55 Chevrolet. It's a Bel Air. Two-door. Two Two-door two hardtop. Yep. And uh, it has a uh, blown... 500 plus cubic inch engine in it that turns out what 700 horsepower 716 716 so you've had it on the dyno and you know right. exactly what it does right. well it's a absolutely beautiful car and uh we're envious well yeah. you know everybody that's that had the opportunity to review this car it's been at many many car shows it's been uh i know what autorama you've been in popular hot rodding i think you've been also into the what's car craft hot rod mm. several different magazines i think we have a few posted on the on the facebook but sonny has uh th- this is his mistress okay he has a wife nancy and a very tolerant wife uh, maybe he can tell us a little bit more about this and you've told me that you've been married 21 years to nancy right Okay, and Nancy accepts all of this. And what is her view on the '55 Chevy? Oh, she she likes it now. She didn't at first, but she really likes it. Now, now that she, you got AC in there, oh right? yeah, right, air conditioner. And then <laughs> she was afraid of the burnouts at first, but now she's she'll sit right there and hang on for the burnouts. She knows it's going to happen. Okay, and uh, so you you bought this '55. We traded it. We found out in earlier in the hour that you actually traded some jet skis for this '55 Chevy. In case those that just now joined us, this is the history of the '55. Right. Tell, tell us more about that, and what what happened? How how did you run across this guy? Well, he he was looking for two jet skis, and he had the fifty five, and uh, he's wanting to get rid of fifty five. So I traded him my Kamasaki jet ski. What was in the fifty five at the time? That it had it, the- it had a big block, but it was more or less stock. It wasn't really a hot rod. Now, for our listeners out there, what is a big block and small block? And it short was, block. It was a 454, but I went to a 502. Okay. But into the radio world out there, some of the people, uh, can you explain to us the difference in a long block, short block, big block, small block? Well, a long block is with heads. Short block is without the heads. And and a big block is uh, 396 on up to a 600. It's cubic, inches. Yeah, cubic, cubic inches. inches and, uh, displacement. And three, uh, three 400, 400 small block goes all the way down to 265. Okay. It's the size of the block. The size of the block. Right? That's yeah. correct. And on replacement, when you get a replacement, they'll say, do you want a long block, short block? That's short correct. block is without the heads and right, long block right. is with. But you've got to have the heads to make it run. Still got to have the heads. It doesn't so, mean you can run a short block without the heads. Well, right. so you obviously swapped out the engines. Did you build the engine yourself? No, I bought a new short block from uh, from uh, Chevrolet, and it used the oil, and I, and I put the aluminum heads on it. And, uh, and so I took it to Tommy Costello, Houston, the balance, and he said I can fix it. So I took it to him. He put rings in it, and uh, the next week I left from the Hot Rod Pirate Tour. I drove 2,400 miles, used a half a quart of oil. And I even raced on the racetrack while I was on the tour. Now, uh, you put a blower on this. Yeah, a 671. A 671 <laughs> blower on the thing that sticks out of the hood. You've also got, it looks like an injection system on this. Well, it has a, a nitro system on it. I had really planned on it, but it runs so good without it. 
without the nitrous. And if I had to turn the nitrous on, I'd be breaking the drive line. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine. So it goes from uh, 700 horsepower to what, over 1,000 You can bid over 1,000 to turn the nitrous on. Unbelievable. Well, the plumbing job that you did on the, on the thing looks really good. Well, thank you. Yeah. Did you do that all yourself? I did all, except the bending the nitrous lines. You buy a kit, it's already bent. But right. all the rest of it, everything else I've done. And how about your chrome? Pardon me for interrupting. No, no, I, go I, right I, ahead. Yeah, no. um, uh, you know, there's enough chrome on here to blind you if you open the hood. Right. Uh, um, you've spent a lot of money on chrome. Don't tell my wife. Uh, no, did, no, I no, didn't no. tell her. Oh, okay. I, no, that's, I, that's that's an eight hundred dollar engine. Remember that. That's, <laughs> that's exactly right. And, and you wouldn't got, have been that much, but the wrong chrome made it cost that much. Right. Yeah, that's Without right. the chrome, it would have been five hundred. Just like the tires, you know, thirty five dollar tires. Thirty five dollar tires. Well, I see that you've got uh, dual electric fans on the thing. Is, is that enough to keep it cool? <laughs> There's two on the front, two on the back of the radiator. And there's, a, uh, there's an air con- two air conditioner condensers under the car with two fans. And there's a transmission cooler in the rear for the fan. But it stays cool. I, about, I got a 160-amp alternator and two batteries. But it, it can sit in the island and put out 13 volts. So you're telling all of your hot rod secrets out here to us. Can, can we knock that out then? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody document that down. I know Sonny's going to bring the 55 out to the Nifty 50s here in the very near future. You drove it out there a couple of weeks ago. And uh, he said... You know, I didn't know I could I could possibly, you know, I drove that thing all the way from Parallel. And how much fuel did you use? You got a 488 well, well, gear he, in this thing? It's eight miles a gallon now. With, uh, eight miles a gallon. Wow. The way I got it jetted, you can jet it down and get better, but then it doesn't run as good. But well, I, I run open headers everywhere I go, and <laughs> a cop stopped me and says, said, what kind of mufflers are those? And I said, what's a muffler? <laughs> no, I like the one where the, you drove by, and the lady says, my God, the whole ground shakes when you drive by here. And, you know. Uh, you know, what was it she said to she you? Said, she said, that's, that's extremely loud. I said, huh? <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, Sonny is a legend. Uh, let me tell you, uh, every hot rodder uh, in the old school, for sure, knows Sonny. And I'm sure some of the new school guys as well that have maybe tried to compete with you a little bit. I asked Sonny off the air. I said, Sonny, has, has a tuner tried to challenge you yet? And your answer was? Uh, I haven't been beat by one yet, but I'm sure there are some out there that can. Yeah. Well, they, not you know, many, I would imagine. And when we're talking tuners, we're talking to the imports, uh, you know, maybe the Hondas or the Toyotas or whatever that have, have challenged Sonny with his blown 55 Chevy. Well, you know, we got a- HPD's Troy Dixon here, and, and yes. Troy, Troy will answer that question here yeah. in just a couple we'll of minutes. We'll get his view on this yeah, as well. Exactly. But uh, it, it is a tradition. But again, Sonny is going to be bringing the 55 out to Nifty 50s. And I think uh, you said you're running 488 gears right. in this thing right now. It was running 456, and that is extremely low for those out there that are joining us in the hot rod world. But. Uh, that was a 456 was a very popular rear end to run right. when you were drag racing. So, anyway, Sonny, I, I, I really appreciate you coming in with us and uh, sharing the world about your 55. We want him to stay for the next hour. Oh, you yes. You can stay definitely. for the next hour, can't you? Sure. Okay, we'll be great. back. Yeah, uh, and uh, by the way, speaking of. You've got uh, nifty fifties tonight. If it doesn't rain, I, I hope so, Don. Uh, the last two weekends, uh, Mother Nature's not been very good to us. Yeah. Uh, we went, uh, we canceled uh, a couple of weeks ago, and then last week we set up, and then the rains came again. So, if uh, if we're lucky, we'll have a show tonight. And where is it? Uh, it's same place, eighty seven forty five Spring Cypress Road at the Kroger Shopping Center there. Uh, Champions Forest Drive in Spring Cypress. We've been there for eight years now. It's a it's a great event for everybody. Uh, to um, to go to it's a family event very and, family and, yes and you know I, I can't encourage everybody enough it, it's um, it, it's a great event with a lot of cars all pre nineteen seventy nine cars great and, family event yeah well I it, think we said that it is a, a time times. capsule uh, Don to sum it up it's uh, if you want to see what America was like in a, in a certain time period or well, we have nothing against the new cars there's something out there for everybody. But we're trying to recapture the American graffiti style. Thank okay. you. Thank you. No, thank you for being you. And remember, don't go changing. No, no. To Can't try to that. please me. You always say that. I know. I, okay. would, I would never do that. We're going <laughs> we're gonna, to uh, swap places here and bring Troy Dixon in. But uh, while we're doing that, I want to remind everybody that in, in real time is proud to present our in-studio guests a free BG oil service with MOA along with BG Carbon Fighter 5, and you can get a free oil change too. All you have to do is email us your name, phone number, and zip code to info at inwheeltime.com, and you'll be entered to win. And by the way, we do not sell your name. You won't be getting bombarded with all sorts of stuff. Just send us your... The only reason we need it is to send you to a uh, dealer 
a BG in the right service area. facility that's close to you. Uh, so the next time you need a coolant flush transmission, power steering, differential, or fuel service, be sure and ask for BG by name. BG products are used by the best dealers and for service facilities around, including Classic Chevrolet in Sugar Land, Colony One Automotive in Richmond, Texan Buick GMC in Humble, Luetta Automotive locations throughout Houston, Spring Honda on I-45 North, Mack Hike Dodge on the North Freeway. Learn all about BG products at bgfindashop.com. we got a link on our website in realtime.com. Okay, joining us now, Troy Dixon with Houston Performance Driving. And we talked last hour, got a little background on Houston Performance Driving. The difference between your bunch, your group, and Randy Shannon's Nifty 50s is is that you guys deal in fairly late model cars right up to the current car that's uh, just coming off of the showroom floor. But you guys uh, really are into cars and like to hot rod them, soup them up, get them all a part of what's going on in the hot rod segment today. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a wonderful group, and uh, you're really active online as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, just with uh, we were talking about in the last segment, you know, it's being the information age, everything dealing with the Internet. Uh, you know, the Internet is a, uh, the main tool in getting your word and your message out and attracting new people and getting new blood uh, into the group and uh, advertising what we do. And how big is the group? Oh, wow. Um, that, that website has grown so much since it started in late 2004. I think there's over 7,500 registered users on HPD alone. And then, of course, now we're just building another uh, website called uh, Performance Driving Network, which is going to take off really well. Um, but, um, you know, what's good about it is, is that we also attract other clubs and other groups. Sure. You know, HPD seems to really be a, uh, it's not a car club. So we it's don't, all encompassing. Right. It's so a fraternity. What, what mm-hmm. happens is we draw the clubs in to have somebody mediate a multi club event. So sure. when I do our cruises and our drag events, um, all the big car clubs, Camaro Club of Houston, you know, the, Mopar, the Mustang Club. Yeah, they all Mopars. come out because they wanted something to do, but they want to be a part of something bigger than themselves sometimes. Sure. And so well, we, we provide that, and we provide a performance driving aspect. Of well, that. having been in a car club yeah. once myself many years ago, the Corvette Club, right. it was a small group. They were all Corvettes. And you know the camaraderie that happens with uh, all of the car clubs, as you well know. It, it, it's huge, and everybody likes to meet different people and uh, different see different cars and learn about different right. cars and and steal this idea but and it's a share this one. Also, it's just a network of folks, and the bigger it is, the better it works. Right. Well, I, I want to tell everybody that's listening this morning and watching on our live uh, video stream uh, on InWheelTime.com that uh, Troy is going to be a regular guest on our show, and matter of fact, a weekly guest, and he's going to be uh, following Randy Shannon with the Nifty 50s, but he's going to bring a different aspect of uh, hot rodding to our show, and that's going to bring us up to date with uh, all the latest stuff from, let's just say, Post nineteen seventy nine. How's that? Yeah. Did that yeah. pretty much? Now, there are some hot rods. There's some old cars in your group. Yeah. But there's also a lot of, lot of some really exotic cars. Right. You know the the latest and greatest is what drives us. You know we do have a lot of guys that probably have both. They like both. Yeah. You know they like the the you know the seventies. They just love 60s. cars. Exactly. Four wheels Period. in a seat. You know performance. Yeah, that's exactly. You know, it. I mean, come on. It, you can't. I mean, it's the best thing you can do. And so, therefore, you know we have guys that that are into this later muscle too that have the most updated chassis you know it's like as soon as the the next generation of say like the viper comes out right. you've got guys on the waiting list ready to get these cars right. ready to soup them up make them more than they are they're having their engines coated and they're doing oh, this and they're, they're doing chomping that. at the they're bit. doing everything i'm sure. sure they're looking at the calendar for every crossing off every day but it's a typical guy you know you buy a new new vehicle then you, first thing you do is you take it apart you know <laughs> <laughs> that's right. and let's make it better well i'll never forget my dad bought a brand new lawnmower uh, this is when my was in my youth. I think uh, I was in the seventh grade. Your youth. Great youth. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to tell you that I took that lawnmower engine right off of that lawnmower and put it right on my motorbike. <laughs> my dad darn, he never said a thing, but I know that it was eating him up and said, you know, I just bought that brand new lawnmower. And here he is trading out the motor from that old skank thing over there and putting on a new motor on his motorbike. Putting a new one on his bike. Yeah, there you go. That's how it works. Yeah, I've been there. Uh, you know, every time... Uh, Fortunately, you know, my parents were great to me growing up, and they bought me a lot of cars. And uh, the first thing they said every time we got that car home is, do not modify this vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the first, first thing, thing you did. Yeah, I went against it completely. Sneak out in the garage <laughs> at 2 o'clock in the morning and screw something on it. Yeah, I got it. 
Yeah, at le- if nothing else, at least flip the air cleaner over on there backwards. There you go. So That's you Don's bit. way. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's great to have you here, and we're going to learn more about it. I know that uh, next week you're going to bring a guest uh, from uh, your group, and we're going to talk about what? What's it going to be? Definitely, you know, just the, the continue on with the websites, but, you know, also just the performance driving aspect, you know. Um, you know, we travel, you know, to tracks all over the country and participate with. Now you just came back from one, right? I just came back from Virginia National Raceway, uh, competing in time trials with the North American Road Racing Association. I uh, definitely try to do as much as possible with them. Um, you know, I was at uh, Road Atlanta before that in time trials, placed third place there behind uh, Des White. What, um, what, what's your vehicle of choice? One of your vehicles, your favorite? How's that? Currently, the weapon of choice is the uh, C6 Z06 uh, Corvette. Um, you know, it just, it's an amazing machine. It's uh, lightweight. It handles beautifully. It's got seven point liter, you know, V8. Uh, it just, it screams in the straights. It handles turns very well. Um, and then of course, you know, you make it lighter. You, you know, you mess with the suspension, you modify it. You take it apart. There you go. (laughs) Exactly. I'm sorry, dad. I'm sorry. Well, you know, it's funny. You should bring that up because when Mike and I visited Ken Lingenfelter, who is known uh, for all of his hot rodding across the United States, he told us, we asked him. If you ha- if you're going to offer up anything that you would suggest people to get, what would it be? He said the best m- m- platform, the yep. best platform for the money would be the, either the C5 or the C6 Corvette because all the parts are available and the basic car is there. And they're reasonably you- priced. Yeah. And you know what? He's right because at home in my garage, I have a C5 Z06 sitting right next to a C6 Z06. Yeah. <laughs> at, so, at the plant, I saw the right. 427 convertibles. Coming out, we yeah. went to the visit the Bowling Green plant recently. Boy, are they nice! Yeah, I've I've seen that a lot. You know, I've traveled up there every year with the 06 Fest, the pilgrimage that comes through the museum, and yeah. uh, those guys are great in that uh, entity up there. And uh, we always take the tours and get to see the yeah. new cars coming. Visit off with the plant manager. Absolutely. Oh, it doesn't get much better. Than okay, that. well, let's expand on this next hour. You're going to come back next hour. Absolutely. With us? All right, very good. Thank you very much. Troy Dixon with Houston Performance Driving uh, with us this morning. Coming up, our new feature called Road Trip and our popular Drive It Home pre-owned segment. We got reviews of the 08 Subaru Outback. Don't laugh. Don't snicker. And then I also have one that you might laugh and snicker at, but you won't after I tell you all about it. And that is going to be the Mercury Marquee. All right. The Marauder was actually my, one of my favorites. Coming up, uh, we're going to have all of that for you and more. You're tuned to In Wheel Time with Don and Mike here on 1560 The Game. Sometimes you can tell a lot about a horse by what it's named. Like its color. It might be blacky or rony or buck. A name can have something to do with a horse's temperament or its disposition, like wild man, or roller, or bad bob. Yeah, the name of a horse is sometimes the name of his game. It's kind of like driving a ram truck. That name means something. It means you know the value of dust, sweat, and pride. Guts, glory, Ram. Ram is a registered trademark of Chrysler Group, LLC. Engines and vehicles today are vulnerable to carbon deposits that can build up in fuel injectors, intake ports, combustion chambers, and on intake valves. Even the smallest amount of carbon can produce increased exhaust emissions, reduced gas mileage, drivability problems, and engine knock. Clean fuel systems create better fuel economy. That's fact. With only one tank of fuel and BG44K gives a total cleanup. BG44K restores mileage and boosts performance. In one professional application, specially formulated BG44K power enhancer thoroughly cleans fuel systems, restores gas mileage, and increases engine performance. See it at the pump. Feel it on the road. Ask your service representative to install BG44K in your gas tank today. Found at over 15,000 locations nationwide. You won't find BG brand products and services at discount stores. They're only available from an authorized BG service center. For a shop in your area, go to BGfindashop.com and enter your zip code. We don't just make a performance sedan. We make the Cadillac CTS-V the fastest production sedan in the world. We equipped the CTS-V 
with a pavement peeling 556 horsepower supercharged V8. We didn't just engineer a brilliant suspension, we created a dual mode magnetic suspension that reacts faster than the blink of an eye. We didn't just give it powerful brakes, we gave it six piston Brembo brakes with locomotive like stopping power. The Cadillac V Series, the record breaking CTS V sedan, stunning CTS V coupe, and audacious CTS V wagon. We don't just make luxury cars, we make Cadillacs. Visit your Houston area Cadillac dealer or log on to HoustonAreaCadillac.com. Don't know the difference between a V6 and a V8? Can't find your dipstick? Or are you just nodding your head when your mechanic tells you you need a new auxiliary timing chamber? Not to worry. The guys from In Wheel Time are here to help. Call Don and Mike and they'll give you the lowdown on all your automotive needs. Now, let's get back to the guys, Don Armstrong and Mike Herzing. Yeah, it's called In Wheel Time. Don Armstrong here along with Mike Herzing. Time now for a road trip, a look at places to go for the evening, overnight, the weekend, or the week. Oh, let's go have fun. Road trip is sponsored by our friends at American Dream Vacations, and Bart's going to be with us next hour. He runs the American Dream Vacations up in he's the He's always side. got some cool place to go. He's always got some, and he's also got the vehicles. Or, uh, or a cool or, way to do it. Yeah, cool way to do it. Yeah, are you familiar, you familiar with it? Oh, well, you're going you to love to do this. this. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, first of all, this is, of course, our uh, our Come drive on. at home. No. Chokes, chokes you up just to think about it. It does. Uh, our drive at home and our road trip segment, and we're going to go 262 miles to the north. We're going to go to Grapevine. The last yeah, hour we nice. were up in Plano, okay? Yeah. Uh, the trip is going to take you four hours and ten minutes to get there. Okay. It's going to cost you $30.59 in gas each way. That is if you get about 25 miles to the gallon on average for a car. Garden Manor is a bed breakfast. Now, I have to tell you, Mm-hmm. As a guy, I've really not been too much into bed and breakfasts. You know, just give me the old Motel 6 and I'm good. And let me go to my race. They leave the light or, on for you. That's what I understand. But, uh, you know, the ladies like it. Uh, yes. Like, and, um, There's a trickle-down effect on that, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. I would <laughs> think that would work. Yeah. So this is, a, this is a Dallas, Texas area bed and breakfast in Grapevine. This is where Dallas meets Fort Worth. Um and I was reading the thing, and I thought, dang, this looks pretty good. I also got a really nice picture here of somebody's living room. Well, that's yeah. the bed and breakfast, my wow. friend. Uh, this is one of the best in Texas, and, and it's not just me saying that. Apparently, people that stay there uh, give it uh, quite a high rating. It offers a guest quiet, relaxing oasis, typically found only in rural areas, yet this one is located in the historic uh, district of Grapevine, which is less than seven miles from Dallas-Fort Worth Intercontinental Airport, International Airport. Yeah. Just 18 miles to Dallas or Fort Worth, so it's midway between. Uh, Guests enjoy walking less than a block to Grapevine's historic Main Street shopping district. So if you want to take a road trip in your car, in your hot rod, sir, uh, this is the place to go. Rates start at $159 per night, and it looks really, really nice. And if you want to find out more information about this, all you have to do is go to Garden Manor. Just Google it. Garden Manor, Grapevine, Texas. Can also, you the Grapevine Chamber of Commerce has a really nice site. Yeah, they did. Go there. Uh, it's uh, also a, a winner, a Certificate of Excellence 2012. So from TripAdvisor. There you go. And that's kind of how we found this thing. But it, uh, it really looks like a great bread and, bed and breakfast. It's beautiful. Look, can you see that? Wow, see that is. It looks like a little plantation. It does. It looks like a little plantation. So that is our our little road trip that we're going to take a nice to Grave Brian. And next hour, we're going to go to the opposite direction here in Texas. We're going to go south, South Padre Island, as a matter oh, of fact. That's always a nice romantic Have you ever trip. been there? Yes, I have. You have know. you been down lately? Yeah, it's not lately, but it's been a while. But Victoria is very nice. Victoria Beach is nice. And you don't even have to go out. You know, on there, and there's always good deals there. There's there's good deals to be had. Yeah, I like it. and we're going to try to help point this some out This is Texas. You. you can go anywhere. You can get any kind of drive it want. home pre-owned. This yes. is where we look at used cars. I got the uh, 2011, 11, 2011 Mercury Marquis. That's not even an old one. I know it. 
All right. And uh, you've got the 08 Subaru Outback. But before you get into that, yes. I've got one little thing I wanted to. Mannheim used vehicle value index calculated 123.4 in June, down from 125 in May. Yeah. So used cars are not as popular as they were just a they're few getting months ago. They're uh, you know, more uh, better priced. They're getting better priced. Well, they're getting better priced because... Everybody's buying new cars. Everybody's buying new cars. So now's a good time to look at a used car. Um, the Mannheim Index measures wholesale used vehicle price changes and is adjusted for time of year mileage and vehicle model mix. Guess what's still hot, though? Used pickup trucks. That's well, no surprise. pickup trucks are always, I mean, I don't care what you get. I mean, they're, they're going to be good, especially here in Texas. Let's, talk, let's talk about We yours. talked about a, a, a great car to have. I was on a Subaru trip, and I was, actually had a chance to drive an older Outback. I'm like, what a nice car. They're fun cars. You can give it to a kid. They won't kill it. You can't kill these things. You can take them off road. You then, they remember the Outback. Remember when they had Crocodile Dundee? You know yeah. the, the famous actor Paul Hogan. This is that little bitty truck ass. thing. Yeah, no, it's not their truck thing. That was the that was the Brat. That was a couple years older than that. How dare you talk to me? That's that right. Way. And, so it's uh, not the Brat. This is a sedan. This is this is a basically a wagon. You know, oh, it's a wagon. wagon. You know, okay. and that's what they're that's what Subaru is is good about. They're they're a little bit crude in a way, but they're very reliable. They run great. They're all wheel drive. So especially in, in slick, slick roads or like some of the rain we've had, these things are great. Uh, it's also great if you ever go into snow or anything. It doesn't stuff. have a whole lot of ground clearance. Yeah, though, they does do. It? Actually, these have a fair amount of ground. They have seven or, eight, seven or eight inches of ground clearance. So it's really pretty good. And you can take these off road. You really can. Well, what... Blue brews are made for the active lifestyles. And they're like, actually, they say like five out of, of, of ten people that buy a Subaru actually take them off road. Now, maybe not off-roading like you would be like on, on a truck or something, but you would take it off and, and you have... You go have, hiking they with They go it. hiking, biking, they go kayaking, and they have, you know, the roof racks that people actually use. Stuff that I There's do all, all the time. That, yeah, right. But this is really good. They come with a 2.5-liter four-cylinder. You can get a manual or automatic, uh, 26 miles per gallon on the highway. You can pick one up for about $13,000 for the base price. And if you get really, you get into the turbo, the limited version, it runs about 18000 But they're reliable. I found several of them around... Uh, cer- certain versions of them, you're talking about fifteen thousand dollars for a really nice one with about fifty thousand miles, and for something with, that was more closer to the base one, you're looking at around eleven thousand. So I'm dying bad. to tell you about this. Okay, tell me about the, the 2011 Mercury, yeah, Mercury, Mercury Marquise. Grand Marquis. I think yes. they call it Grand Marquis, but whatever. It's a couple of decades past its prime. <laughs> <laughs> but they're comfortable. Big, comfy seats, simple control, six-passenger capacity, huge trunk. But ancient design, nautical ride and handling, anemic V8, poor fuel economy, stability control is not available, missing modern conveniences. Yeah, okay, so what? So, Don, how much is a used how one? How much a, is what, a used one? Are you ready? Yeah. Basically, overall, $18,450. <laughs> You know, it's thirty thousand dollar car. It's all gussy. It's a land yacht, and they will last forever. Yeah, and I found a couple of them. Here's one seventeen six seventy eight with thirty one thousand miles on it. So go get yourself a Grand Marquis and live in the past like Mike and me. (laughs) Hey, thanks for joining us today here on In Wheel Time, presented by Ram Truck. Stay with us. In Wheel Time continues after this short break, right here on fifteen sixty The Game. Always wondered what it would be like to take the family camping in an RV? Wonder no more as American Dream Vacations has all types and sizes of RVs for rent. Whether you'd like one for an overnight stay at Huntsville State Park or a one-month road trip across America, American Dream Vacations has an RV that fits your needs and your budget. From one convenient location on I-45 North just outside the Beltway, American Dream Vacations can help you select a pop-up camper or motorhome that's just right for you. Hey, if you're planning a trip to an out-of-town race, to the hill country for a weekend of tubing down the river with friends, or a birthday or holiday celebration that'll be a carefree, fun time, think American Dream Vacations. Hey, if you already own an RV that sits in storage most of the time, American Dream Vacations has a plan that'll help you pay for it. Just give them a call. Instead of putting your money in airplane tickets, rental cars, and hotels, do something different and fun for a change in an RV rental. Go to AmericanDreamVacations.net or give them a call at 281-872-9200. American Dream Vacations. We now return to a Chevy dealer near you. You okay, Kyle? You look pretty wore out. I had the craziest dream last night. We were here at the dealership. 
offering qualified customers 0% APR financing on all 2012 Silverados and Traverses. Uh, that's not a dream. It's happening right now, Kyle. It's truck month. Really? Yeah. What about the part where my arms were espresso machines and I fell asleep inside the butter dish? That was a dream. And there was the $2,000 allowance on eligible trade-in. Well, that's reality, all month long. And I had that little dog made out of nachos. Dream. And the coverage on the Silverado was amazing. Reality. And then I ripped off my shirt and demanded a raise. Oh, yes, that was Tuesday. Was anybody else here? Oh, everybody was here. It's truck month, for real. Visit your local dealer for details. Length of contract limited, not available with some other offers. Excludes leases, must show proof of current ownership and trade in a 1999 or newer vehicle. See dealer for details, take delivery by April 30th, 2012. Call 1-800-950-CHEV for details. IQ Auto Buyers buys wrecked vehicles. Had an accident? Don't spend $5,000 in repairs and end up with the same old car. Sell it like it is and buy another car. Call IQ Auto Buyers at 713-456-3196. Mechanical problems? Transmission gone bad? Need an engine? IQ Auto Buyers will buy your vehicle in its present condition and pay you on the spot. If you have insurance, you can keep that money too. The process is simple and painless. Call 713-456-3196 or go to IQAutoBuyers.com. Hey, the towing is free, you get paid on the spot, and it usually takes 20 minutes or less. IQ will not try to sell you anything. All they do is pay top market value for your car, truck, or motorcycle regardless of condition. Call 713-456-3196 or go to IQAutoBuyers.com and sell your wrecked car today. IQ Auto Buyers, the smart way to sell your car. Despite our sluggish economy, new car sales continue to rock with a forecast of 14.9 million sold by the end of the year. New study predicts a dramatic drop in the cost of lithium-ion batteries. And Michael looked back at last week's drive of a new Subaru in Hawaii. Those stories and commentary straight ahead on today's edition of In Wheel Time. Don Armstrong and Mike Herzing are the gurus of the automotive world. With over 60 years of combined automotive experience, there's not much they don't know. Unless you want to know a cheap way to get your Geo Metro's horn to play the theme song from Happy Days. Sunday, Monday, Happy Days. Then this is not the show for you. But everything else automotive, Don and Mike have got you covered. Just call in and ask. Now, let's get back to the guys. And today's In Wheel Time is presented by Ford and your local Ford dealers. Visit TexasFord.com and your local Ford dealers today. And good afternoon, Mr. Mike Herzing. You got it right. I'm well, so proud of you, it is. It, it's an amazing thing. You know why? Because you wrote I, it down there. I wrote it in great big letters for everybody that's looking. You can good see, afternoon. You can see that across the way. But sometime this hour, I promise I will say good morning. Yes, and not even know but it. that's okay. Let's get right to the news, shall we? Car makers maintain solid output despite the slow economy, according to Automotive News. Um, Mike Jackson, IHS, which is the Institute for Highway Safety, okay. the automotive director of North American Forecasted U.S. sales, have slowed a bit from the strong monthly sales earlier this year, but it's still going to be a good year for the industry. Uh Jackson predicts the North American auto industry will produce nearly 14.9 million light vehicles this year. That would be up 13%. That's a lot wow. over 2011. Up. And it's slightly higher than this uh, organization's initial forecast of 14.7. From July through September, North American assembly plants will produce 3.45 million light vehicles, up 8% from a year earlier, and the strongest third quarter since 2007, according to a forecast by IHS. Volkswagen up 27% in the third quarter and Toyota Motor Corporation up 24% will lead the charge according to this forecast. A year ago, a Volkswagen's Chattanooga plant was just starting to ramp up production of the Passat sedan while Toyota suppliers were struggling to recover from Japan's devastating earthquake. Uh, Honda also suffered from the earthquake. They're going to raise vehicle production by 16%, but Nissan which avoided big earthquake-related production cuts last year, will reduce third-quarter output by 
1%, which is significant, even yeah. though it's only but 1%. they've gained mar- market share. Yeah. Also, uh, several structural trends that favor North American producers. First, the strong yen has put heavy pressure on Japanese automakers to shift more production right. to here, they to the United States. They lose money if the car comes from Japan. Second, the German luxury automakers view North America as a cost-effective export base. Mercedes and BMW have U.S. assembly plants, and Audi plans to build one in Mexico. And third, Mexico has emerged as a versatile export base for automakers thanks to its trade treaties with the United States, South America, and Europe. So look for more uh, cars coming out of Mexico. Makes you wonder about those those years that we were selling 17 million cars. God, there was new car everywhere. Yeah, exactly. A study predicts dramatic decline in lithium-ion battery costs. Now, these are the batteries that are in all of your EVs, the hybrids, everything. Uh, The car manufacturers are using this. And uh, this is important because I think that it will translate into cheaper prices for hybrids and electric vehicles. Uh, The price of the lithium-ion is expected to fall dramatically by the end of the decade and even further by 2025, according to a McKinsey study released this week. This, according to Automotive News, uh, in a should-cost model that researchers developed, the consulting firm says that the price for a complete automotive lithium-ion battery pack could drop from 500 to $600 per kilowatt hour today to about 200 to $160 by 2025. Wow. So that's very significant. If we're even using that type of battery by then. Yeah, you know? exactly, because everybody's working on yeah, something working on everything. bigger and better. Yeah, uh, it's, there's no telling. Yeah, uh, so... Could be nuclear. You know, we could be nuclear. Nucle- nuclear. Nuclear. No, nuclear, yeah. Nuclear. Yeah, they yeah. call it nuclear. Yeah, exactly. So um, that's the we- uh, that's the, this week's Wheel News. But you have uh, big news because you just got back from... Hawaii and your yeah, Subaru was, paid for a trip, you yes. dog. I didn't get invited. <laughs> well, you wouldn't have gone anyway. You're always too busy doing voiceovers somewhere. Well, I, I have been busy, but I don't know. I, I might have. We drove, I drove the XV Cross Trek. And, uh, you know, Subarus, they what, make the Impreza. Is this Impreza. something new? This is new. This is the Impreza. Basically, think of the Outback, which is one of the, my favorite vehicles. And it's kind of like the sport version of it. So what you've got is it's a wagon. It's a four-seater very good, very very comfortable, big, pretty good sized wagon. It's got the ugliest wheels I've ever seen. And yeah, well, they, that's okay. That was just one of the wheels they're going to come out with. They've got several different versions, but it's uh, it's higher up off the ground. It's got nice cladding on the outside, so it's basically an SUV, and it's all wheel drive. And we were doing some serious off roading, crossing creeks and climbing hills and things like that in a, in a Subaru. You know, I don't think too much about that when I think of Hawaii. I always think about beach, Maui. Yeah, pretty women in bikinis. We were on the North Shore. Uh, a lot of on, alcohol. Yep, we were on the North Shore with no alcohol, and uh, uh, well, at least while we were driving, anyway. And uh, it was great, and I was amazed by them. It's a great vehicle. It's thirty-three miles per gallon, so it's for somebody that wants a wagon that that's going to be for, with an active lifestyle, like you and me here. We're real, real active automatic. Guys here. They, they make an up. automatic or a or a six-speed. I know, uh, and, manual. Uh, and manual, and uh, it was a great vehicle. And it was fun to drive, which is what Subaru is all about. And it's sporty. Has it got the flat four in it? And it's got the, you know, it's got a flat six. Flat six in it. And okay. uh, it's it's a great engine. It's great drivetrain. It's got, low to the ground for the for the for the lower center of gravity because the engine's so much lower. But it, does it have enough ground clearance? It has. Yeah, it has probably it has more than most SUVs. It's like two inches less than a uh, than like a Jeep Grand Cherokee. It was right up there. I mean, it's really. Has some serious ground clearance. Well, I saw a picture of it. It looked like it was high right. up off and the ground. And it's all wheel drive, which is what everybody wants. Because you posted Subaru. that picture on it's Facebook. Got, that's right, and it's got a it's got a nice roof rack. We can actually throw stuff on it, and it's got you know, everything. The seats fold down flat. You can it's like a you can like a family truckster in a way, but it's very versatile and it's fun. Does it have room athletic. in the back seat? Yes, it has room in the back seat. I've actually drove around in the back seat of one. So Jeff Yip and I, Mr. Chronicle and and uh, things like that was was with me, and uh, we did a lot of driving, did a lot of off-roading, and we really had a good time. Okay. And it's going to be a big seller when it gets to the dealers probably around the end of August. So they flew you down there. Yep. They put you up. Yep. They fed you. Yep. They wined and dined you. Yep. They let you drive cars off-road, tear them up. We didn't tear them up, actually. They held up really well. How many journalists were on this? Oh, about oh, 10 or 12 on this wave, and there was probably 10 or 12 on the, the wave before that. So, the one, so. so it was an uh, elite bunch. Very an elite Not that bunch. you're elite. And because but. Of, of the in-wheel time that, that, that Subaru and a lot of companies have, have great respect for in-wheel time, I got a chance to go. 
And then you parlayed that into an extra couple of days with your and lovely wife, ex- Gina. Extra couple of days. And, and what did you do? Week. Not that this has anything we to do with cars, but I'm dying stuff. to know. I went to the Arizona Memorial, like you said I should go. I, I, we hiked at the top of the Was that everything day. I said it would be in yeah. more? Yeah, and it was very emotional. It was a very a very neat thing. And then yeah. we did the Pacific, uh, Air and Pacific Museum. And uh, we didn't do the Missouri, although I was going to. I just, I'd already gone to the USS Alabama. And uh, but but let's say that was kind of the sister ship. But uh, climbing the top of Diamond Head was really nice. Going to Waikiki Beach. I can't I can't imagine you hiking to the top of Diamond Head every day. Each day, the first three days, actually all the days I was there, I we walked over seven and a half miles each day. Gina made you do that because no, I know no, that... I don't mind walking, but it was actually it's nice because it's not it's comfortable there. It's not like it's it is here, uh, and it was nice. And but we did a lot of Waikiki stuff. Went to had the dinner at Duke's. On Did you do Beach. some surfing? No, I was going to, but I actually ran out of time. But boy, <laughs> is the water cold. Oh, my gosh. It is a little chilly. It is very chilly. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, But did see some big sea turtles that are practically, you know, about three feet across. Mm-hmm. And they were big, big monsters. That's what turtle. We were, the last three days, we were at uh, Turtle Turtle Bay Resort. And they call that because that a lot of turtles. We saw the pipeline. We saw all the good places. It was a pretty good day. Well, good. And you only, went, you only went to Oahu. Yeah, we only went on Oahu. So it was fun. Of course, that's the most populated island and, and has probably most of the attractions. And did you get to drive on Oahu? Yes, we How did. Was the I rented there? a car for a couple of days and drove around. Traffic was murder, wasn't Traffic it? Traffic was pretty brutal, and all the speed limits are 25 and 35. Well, you can't go over that anyway. I think that the, the biggest, the highest speed limit was the highway on, on uh, H1, IH1, and it was 55. That was that's it. That's it. So why would you buy a, a really fast car? Well, you know, a lot of scooters, a lot of little, a lot of air cooled Volkswagens, a lot of cool old cars. Well, when you're on the island, there's not too many places to go other than on the island. On the, and the vehicles don't get moved except on the island. As a matter of fact, the whole time I was there, the only car I saw with different license plates but Hawaiian license plates were the Subarus we were driving. They had California and Illinois plates. And so they shipped them over there for this drive. From Japan, and they stopped there on the way to California. And dropped them off. Yep. And we'll have them again. They'll be in the press fleet pretty soon, and you'll be driving, and you can enjoy it. I'm jealous. It's a fun car. All right. Hey, coming up here on In Wheel Time, our Keep It Running segment. Got a maintenance issue you want to challenge us with? Mikey answers dipsticks questions of the week. Don't forget to visit us on Facebook and be sure and check out our website, too, where we're live streaming video right now. Inwheeltime.com and on 1560 The Game. Every day I love you less and less. Want to break up? I got to get this feeling off my chest. With a vehicle that's breaking Every down? Day I love then get to your Texas Ford dealer because the Ford Summer Sellathon is back. You'll drive the best in Texas with the fuel efficiency, capability, and savings you'll love. Great low financing, big cash rebates, and super low monthly payments on Ford F-150 and Super Duty. Properly equipped, the most capable pickups in the Lone Star State also offer the best fuel economy. Or check out Ford Fiesta, Focus, or Fusion Hybrid. Three Ford cars that get up to an EPA-estimated 40 MPG. Drive Explore or the unsurpassed highway fuel economy of Ford Edge. Both available with Ford's fuel-saving EcoBoost engine technology. Now during the Ford Summer Sellathon, you'll save big time on the best-selling brand in Texas. It's time to fall in love again with the new Ford during the Summer Sellathon. Going on now at your best in Texas Ford dealer. We now return to a Chevy dealer near you. You okay, Kyle? You look pretty wore out. I had the craziest dream last night. We were here at the dealership offering qualified customers 0% APR financing on all 2012 Silverados and Traverses. Uh, that's not a dream. It's happening right now, Kyle. It's truck month. Really? Yeah. What about the part where my arms were espresso machines and I fell asleep inside the butter dish? That was a dream. And there was the $2,000 allowance on eligible trade-ins. Well, that's reality, all month long. And I had that little dog made out of nachos. Dream. And the coverage on the Silverado was amazing. Reality. And then I ripped off my shirt and demanded a raise. Oh, yes, that was Tuesday. Was anybody else here? Oh, everybody was here. It's truck month, for real. Visit your local dealer for details. Length of contract limited, not available with some other offers. Excludes leases, must show proof of current ownership and trade in a 1999 or newer vehicle. See dealer for details. Take delivery by April 30th, 2012. Call 1-800-950-CHEV for details. We don't just make a performance sedan. We make the Cadillac CTS-V, the fastest production sedan in the world. 
we equipped the CTS-V with a pavement peeling, 556 horsepower, supercharged V8. We didn't just engineer a brilliant suspension, we created a dual mode magnetic suspension that reacts faster than the blink of an eye. We didn't just give it powerful brakes, we gave it six piston Brembo brakes with locomotive-like stopping power. The Cadillac V-Series, the record-breaking CTS V-Sedan, stunning CTS V-Coupe, and audacious CTS V-Wagon. We don't just make luxury cars, we make Cadillacs. Visit your Houston area Cadillac dealer or log on to HoustonAreaCadillac.com. Got a question? Give us a call at 713-439-1560. Now. Let's get back to our resident auto pros. Here they are, Don Armstrong and Mike Hersey. Yeah, thanks for joining us today here on In Wheel Time with Don and Mike on 1560 The Game. Time now for our Keep It Running segment where we give you tips and answer your questions about vehicle maintenance with none other than Mr. Johnny Dipstick. And Keep It Running today is sponsored by BG Products. I'm hanging my head low because I'm about to get into trouble. Yes, yes you, are. you are. As people have wanted me to explain to you, the whole purpose of a tease <laughs> Where you give a trivia question, they listen through the commercial so that they hear the answer on the other side. Well, we've had 26 phone calls so far saying that you forgot to give the answer to the question <laughs> of what happened when Sonny put that custom-designed fuel cell on his car. And what happened because of that at a car show a few minutes later. So to punish you, not the audience, I'm going to wait and let Sonny give you the answer to that trivia question. It was awesome. Well, anyway. just uh, just like uh, I, I recall back when I was married. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Yes, you're wrong, Don. It's all my fault. <laughs> all your fault. <laughs> and we have, we have hundreds of listeners to remind you of that. Okay, moving ahead. Uh, let's see. Dennis wants to know, what causes fog to form on the inside of my car windshield when I'm driving in a rainstorm? It's humidity. It's, that's easy to happen. You turn on your A.C., and that which is on most domestic cars, it automatically happens when you turn on your defroster. So when you're driving at 55 miles an hour on the freeway yes. and it suddenly fogs up, what do you do? Turn on your AC. Make sure your ACs hadn't failed. If you have a, if you have an import, some of the imports, they don't do that. Some of the older ones especially, doesn't automatically turn on your air conditioner. Do you so, have to put it on defrost and warm it up to clear it up? No, you didn't, it isn't the warmth that you need. It's the, it's the uh, drier air that you need. So you need a little bit of warmth. Even but, colder air. Yeah, it would be Flying colder air. Okay, well, here's one for you on that same note. Yes. May I just interject this? Sure. Go ahead. But oh. you've got to give us the answer this yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. You have to give well, us the answer. Well, it's okay. Never mind then. No, go ahead. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so I'm driving a car. Oh, that's good. This week that obviously has some sort of a flapper problem up under the A blend dash. door. Blend door. A yes. blend door. Uh-huh. So you turn on the air conditioner. And it it makes humidity come on the outside of the windshield, so you've got so. In other words, the air conditioner is supposed to be blowing out the vents. It's, it's blowing out the defroster. It's blowing vents. out the, defr- the the defroster. So it Con- makes yeah. causes condensation on the outside of the. Thank windshield. you for helping me. That's it. Because I need a lot of help right now. <laughs> I, I think I need to take my vitamin E or something. You need to intoxicate. So how do you fix that, Mike? What do you mean? Fix what? what? what His he thing? Said. He needs to turn on the heat just a little bit, and okay. it'll be all right. That's all right. Problem. You'll get, that way you'll get warm, dry air. Okay. Let's move on to a better question. Okay. Mike, I just put on new shocks and new motor mounts, and I'm getting vibrations. What could be going on? Could be you're listening to a Beach Boy song, but uh, besides the good vibrations, uh, you may have the center of the motor mounts. So that's one thing. Just because you center, put them on center. does not mean yeah, they're not. It, it's right. It could be everything could be in a bind, especially if it's an import. With uh, with the front wheel drive, so you have to loosen it all up and put it between different drive and, and you know kind of center it. How's that? Okay, so to avoid getting or all bound take, up, or take it center. to somebody that knows what they're doing. All right, so to avoid getting all bound up, you just center yes. the motor. You don't, Don, don't say bound it. up. Don't say it. Okay. Don't say it. Uh, let's see. Tim writes in. Mike, help! My alternators keep burning out. What could be the problem? He doesn't say anything about whether he's putting on remanufactured or rebuilt. If he's ah. putting on rebuilt, mm-hmm. uh, it's just probably the fact that they're just horrible. and Or it could be he has a bad battery. Sometimes a, a, a bad battery, a shorted battery, will tear up your alternators. Or it could be most of the time it's just low quality. Put in, Be sure to put remanufactured instead of rebuilt. 
Okay. Even though the rebuilds have lifetime warranty, don't worry about that. Ignore that. Go with a the the brand. Like if you have a Chevy, you want to use a Delco. If you have a Ford, you want to have Motorcraft, you know, Chrysler, Mopar, that kind of thing. Use original equipment if you can. Okay. It'll solve all, right. all your problems. Okay. Bob writes in, and you may have to help me understand this question, but I'm running 31 by 18 and a half by 15s on wheeled wheels that run pretty good up to 50 miles an hour, and then they start vibrating. I had them spin balance, but they still vibrate in their new tires. Mickey Thompson Sportsman. Any ideas? Well, those are big tires, you know, like off road tires. tires. They're pretty good sized tires. And they may have A, moisture in them, which Mm -hmm. is you can balance them. And then as soon as you, as soon as the moisture moves around your thing, it could have anything inside. Uh, If somebody used Fix a Flat or something like that. But the main thing is take it to somebody and have them balance them correctly. Right. and well, That's the big deal. I called our buddy Jeff over yep. at uh, American Tires, and he said typically when you add this huge tire, yep. uh, it, it's a problem. And so uh, the fix would be to strengthen the suspension with uh, stronger tie rods, control arms, sway bars, if it it's important. Because be, these aren't that big of tires, but they're pretty good size. And make sure, most importantly, about the rotors and calipers. You need that for stopping power. Uh, and he's, the bonus answer, Jeff said, uh, is that larger tires are affecting the speedometer with incorrect speed reading. Yes. The yes. speedometer may need to be flat. You're going a lot faster than 50 when it says that. When it says 50, mm-hmm. you may be doing 60. So you, Flashed? you flash the speedometer in the depending old days, on the year of the vehicle. The, change the speedo gear. Nowadays, you change the programming in the computer. You, know, so you we'll don't see. want to say things like that in front of me. I know. No. Don will be in a raincoat Don, standing in front of his car. Is. Okay. All right. Tom, do you have anything to add to that answer? Tom Chorba with uh, Mr. Sticker is in the studio with us this morning, and he is uh, he's the, the know-it-all man about state inspections and and emissions. And, and let me emissions. and let me well, that's part of it, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things is that uh, Tom knows a lot about what keeps your car safe because the state has implemented these rules to live by that you have to pass every year. Yes. And a lot of cars don't. Exactly, because we live in a gas-and-go society. That's the bottom line. You put gas in your vehicle and go. People don't have the time or take the time to look at the safety items. That's why, at Mr. Sticker, every year we do a safety check on the vehicle by the law. And that's as simple as that. You do what the state asks you to do. Yes, sir. Requires. Yes, sir. And it's really nothing. It's horrible. It's just just stuff that you really should do every once. How in a while. much is an inspection sticker these days? Thirty nine seventy five. Okay, but you don't need a windshield. Just wipers. Just wipers. Right. No okay. windshield. And you don't need a muffler. Just exhaust. No, you do need a muffler. Do you? Mm-hmm. But it can't be hanging with coat hanger. Oh darn it! Can Mr. you can you have cutouts? Nope. You can't have cutouts. You can have them, but. It must have the exhaust system intact. No, I understand. Muffler and everything but you else. can have cutouts. Sure. You just can't have them on when you go to the inspection. Just state. like an air horn. Mm-hmm. Okay, got it. All right. mm, Thank cool. you. All right, Johnny. All right, Billy Ray writes, how do I remove the oil filter adapter to replace the gasket for my 2002 GMC Sonoma V6 two-wheel drive? I've got oil leaks above the oil filter, and recently I replaced the oil cooling line, and it didn't fix the leaks be- because I thought it may, so therefore I thought it might be the gasket on the cooling line that's causing the problem. Mike, how do I remove that oil filter adapter? It looks like there's two hex screws hidden by the oil filter. You have to buy special tools and you have to buy all these adapters. It's easier rather than buy all the tools, it's cheaper to just go get somebody to get it to do it for you. Like but, a Mr. Sticker? Yeah, no, Mr. No, Sticker Mr. wouldn't do it, but go to go to a repair BG? shop and have them do that. Go to a BG shop or something like mm-hmm. that. But while they're there, have them just change all of the stuff that's in all the O-rings, all the seals, and all the thing around that. So that way, when they take this off, they change everything around it, put it back on, and it won't leak again for several years. And those seals really aren't, don't cost no, much money. No, it's, it's just going to basically pay labor. And, mm-hmm. to buy, and the labor isn't all that bad either. But the problem is you fix one thing and, and everything next to it will start leaking. Just take care of all that stuff. And you don't have the tools. And you don't have the tools. All right. Uh, let's see. Jimbo wrote, uh, I drove through a construction zone and tar spattered on my fenders. What can I do to get that road tar off? Well, they make tar removal stuff. But you can also use, like you said, we talked about earlier, WD-40. It's all about it on our website. Okay. And you wouldn't think that. You would think that that would be a petroleum-based product, but it's not. It's fish oil. It's right. really a solvent is just as much as anything. It's really not a lubricant. It's a solvent more than anything else. Exactly. And it's a great thing to use that. But they also have special tar remover. Okay. But WD-40 might be better on your, on your clear coat. 
Uh, this one in from David all the way in Gulf Shores, Alabama. I've got a truck with rear drum brakes. After looking at the brake shoes, I decided I should replace them. The frictional material w- material was getting really thin. The auto parts person informed me that I should also buy a rear brake hardware kit. So I did. What's the best method to make sure I get all the springs and clips in the correct position? What you do is you take off one side at a time, and you always have the other side to look at as reference. Or you can also, you know, photograph it. But the best, what, what real technicians do, because they don't remember every single one, they're, all these cars are different, you always want to take one side off at a time. Mm-hmm. And that way you'll have the other one to double check. Okay. So that's the easiest, that's the safest and easiest way to do it. And follow Do Don. not take both of them off at once. And you follow Don. Like Don Armstrong does. Yes, like yeah. Don Armstrong. Follow Don's Armstrong. number one rule for working on his car, do it sober. Okay. Since uh, when did he start that? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jimmy John wrote in, Ford 150, four-wheel drive, automatic transmission, leaks fluid after driving on the interstate. No leakage on short runs. The truck's got 100,000 miles, and transmission leakage appears to be heat-related. No slippage or rough shift. Leakage is heavy after driving on the interstate 20 or 25 miles on hot days. What could be the problem? Well, most of the time, that type of thing is, isn't really the leakage isn't heavy. It's just that it accumulates and starts leaking as when you stop. So it's leaking, you just don't see it, and after a while, it puddles up in, in, in the, under the bell housing, and it'll start just pouring out. And that's that. usually a front pump seal or a torque converter seal or uh, O-ring. Okay. All right. And it may need a bushing like we were talking about on that 56 Ford. It may have a bushing. It may have a problem there. But normally, they always leak, and you just don't always see it. It'll, okay. But it'll pool. All right. What's next? Let's do our trivia. Okay. Oh, come well, on. I'm not going to give you the answer because Sonny's going to give you the, the previous. But uh, the third and final Sonny Poteet trivia question is, what do other drivers often do if they beat Sonny in a drag race? A, they buy him a few beers. B, they apologize. C, they ask for his autograph and get a picture taken with him. <laughs> D, they ask Sonny if he wants a rematch. I would say all of the above. But I would bet that they that they more than often they want their picture taken with him. The correct answer, they apologize. Oh. Sorry for beating you. And Sonny said, yeah, what I tell him is, yeah, if you beat me, you've beaten a 70-year-old man. If I beat you, a 70 70- your old man just beat your butt on the drag strip. So he says he enjoys that more. Yeah, that's true. That's all I have. Okay, well, thank you for being you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> it's always good to have you with us, Mr. Johnny Dipstick. And uh, you'll be back. You won't be back next no, week. No, next week I will be in Duluth Superior, Duluth, Minnesota. That's a long ways away. Yeah, you remember, Mom fell, broke her hip. Yeah, how's she doing, uh, by the she way? She really she did fall and break her hip. She did, right? she did. She, so she's back home recently from the hospital rehabbing, and my uh, brother and I are going to be taking care of her. Okay, well, good. But right. we will have a fill-in. Yeah? Charlie Crankshaft. Charlie? Charlie Crankshaft. David Crankshaft. Crankshaft. Okay, well, we look forward to that, I think. I'll let you know when you get back, but good luck on your trip. Hey, you got a question for us here at In Wheel Time? Shoot us an email at info at inwheeltime.com. Coming up, Toy Time, Nifty 50's Randy Shannon talks hot rods with Sonny Poteet, feared at the drag strip by everyone. And Troy Dixon from Houston Performance Driving gets us updated on the current trends in street and track performance. You're listening to In Wheel Time with Donna Mike on 1560 The Game and streaming around planet Earth via InWheelTime.com. Mike Herzing for BG Products, the first name in quality fluids to make your vehicle last longer and perform better. Did you know ethanol speeds up corrosion in your fuel system? Government policies are pushing more ethanol in your gas tank. So now is the time to protect your vehicle before any damage happens. You need BG Products in your vehicle for better performance, longer life, and improved fuel economy. BGCF5 has patented stabilizers to prevent fuel corrosion and keep your entire fuel system clean. Just use it each time you change your oil. It's that simple. BG products are so good, they offer a free lifetime protection plan just for having regular service. It's like extending the warranty on your vehicle's engine, transmission, and more. This is unmatched in the industry. 
Protect your fuel system from ethanol damage. Get BG CF5. And don't forget the BG protection plan for the lifetime of your vehicle. It's even transferable. To find a BG dealer near you, go to BGFindAShop.com. That's BGFindAShop.com. Hey, I want to remind you that All About Cakes is Sugar Land's sweetest secret. Chef Michelle specializes in custom cake design and artistry, including the Southwest's best cupcakes. Bake fresh daily. All About Cakes is open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6, Saturdays, 10 to 4. Stop by All About Cakes Bakery Design Studio and try flavors like Key Lime, Bananas Foster, Red Velvet, Caramel Mocha, Chocolate Chip, Vanilla Chardonnay, just to name a few. Visit their website address to allaboutcakesugarland.com or stop by 13134 Dairy Ashford in Sugarland between 59 and Highway 90A. Yes, it is All About Cakes. Want to break up with a vehicle that's breaking down? Then get to your Texas Ford dealer because the Ford Summer Sellathon is back. You'll drive the best in Texas with the fuel efficiency, capability, and savings you'll love. Great low financing, big cash rebates, and super low monthly payments on Ford F-150 and Super Duty. Properly equipped, the most capable pickups in the Lone Star State also offer the best fuel economy. Or check out Ford Fiesta, Focus, or Fusion Hybrid. Three Ford cars that get up to an EPA-estimated 40 MPG. Drive Explore or the unsurpassed highway fuel economy of Ford Edge. Both available with Ford's fuel-saving EcoBoost engine technology. Now during the Ford Summer Sellathon, you'll save big time on the best-selling brand in Texas. It's time to fall in love again with the new Ford during the Summer Sellathon. Going on now at your best in Texas Ford dealer. Why do drivers come drive for waste management? Lots of opportunity. It's a large company with great benefits. I thought it would be a uh, good place to start a new career. I like working with all the guys, seeing them start at the beginning and to grow to have a career like I've grown to have a career. And what about you? It gives me the opportunity to pay the bills and have a steady income. All across the country, waste management is hiring experienced and entry-level CDL drivers and mechanics, men and women who are ready to grow with one of the nation's fastest-growing companies, earn competitive pay, great benefits, paid safety training, and even employee discounts on things your family needs. Plus, Waste Management offers full-time daylight schedules so drivers can be home every night. Apply online. Go to WMCareers.com. That's WMCareers.com. Or call toll-free 1-877-220-5627. That's 1-877-220-5627. Determination. Challenge. Commitment. That's how we roll. Waste Management is a safety-first, equal-opportunity employer. Let's get back to the guys the automotive professionals turn to. Don Armstrong and Mike Herzig. I feel so close to you right now. Oh, yes, we do. You're listening to In Wheel Time with Don and Mike on 1560 The Game. Presented by Ford and your local Ford dealers. Visit TexasFord.com and your local Ford dealers today. This is our Toy Time segment where we talk about custom cars. What was that? That was interesting. It was kind of like a delay on a delay. Is that one of those electronic things? What was that? What was that guy that the talking head guy back in the eighties? What? Uh, thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you very much for reminding us of that. This is our toy time segment where we talk about custom cars, modified street rods, classics, muscle cars, race cars, antiques, and any other kind of car that you can think of, even cars that don't run. We haven't done a segment on junk cars yet, but I guess that, that that's... Give us time. We will. Uh-huh. We'll have to bring in a junkyard Junk man. cars resurrected in into picker. hot rods. Yes. A, a junk a, car a picker. picker. Yeah. That'd be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> you betcha. That, there's an idea for a television show. In the, in the classic car world, Don, there's no such thing as a junk, junk car. Junk car. Yeah, yeah, I know. Today, store, today's Toy Time yeah. is sponsored by Ram Trucks, and as always... Randy Shannon with the Nifty 50s Car Club is joining us with a very special guest this week by the name of Sonny Poteet. Sonny Poteet, a legend. Yep, been around the Houston area for quite some time. Uh, hung out back in uh, Paso Get Down Dina for quite a while, Absolutely. I understand. Absolutely. Yeah. You did, did you not? I did. Well, you know what? You might want to push that button right there. Turn do your we, microphone. Do, yeah, do there we, we not? go. Yes, we do. Okay. But uh, we wanted to talk basically uh, the career of this gentleman, Sonny Poteet. He's been in a lot of careers, Don, Mike. So, Sonny, without further ado, we have a brief time to talk about this. So, give us a rundown on your history. What makes up Sonny Poteet? And, and, and the hot rod, the especially hot rod. the hot yeah. rod man that's yes. in you. Yes. I was in the record business 25 years, and uh, then I went in the, the pawn shop business for 15 years, and then I was a machinist in a machine shop for five years, 
and right in the middle of all that, I was in an ambulance business for about two years, so I could drive fast and not get a ticket. <laughs> when are you gonna When are you gonna figure out what you want to do when you get old? I, I don't know. I haven't got old yet, and I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm looking for a job now. <laughs> <laughs> well, in case our listeners just joined us, Sonny is at the ripe age of seventy and uh, plans to race until he's 80, and he's trying to figure out just exactly how he can shave a little more time off. Well, let's uh, talk uh, about his car just for a second. Let me, yeah. if you don't mind, no, it's a right 55 ahead. Chevrolet. And, uh, Sonny, how long have you had the car? 20, all right, almost 20 years. 18, 20 years. 19 years. Well, and, and how many cubic inches is this? It's a blown 502. A blown 502 Chevrolet in the 55 Chevrolet that you drag race. Right. And drive it on the street. And drive on the street as well. Uh, you've tubbed the rear end, so it's got huge uh, room for huge slicks on the back. They're 20, 21 inches wide. 21 20. inches wide, not not tall. Yeah. And uh, what will this thing do in the quarter mile? Well, 1076. 1076 in the quarter mile. 126 mile an hour. Yeah. And that's not a light car either. It's no. not light at all. What, what class 20. do you race in? I just go out there for the fun of it. So you don't. You you don't know, somebody wants to race, I'll race them. And yeah. It weighs 4,300 pounds. So it's it's a beast. Right. It yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Okay. Well, it's an absolutely beautiful car. We've got uh, some pictures up on, on our website and on Facebook. Uh, it's understated. It's what we call a sleeper, except for that the green, blower. The, the blower sticking out. Yeah, yeah. the blower yeah. and the carburetor sticking out of the hood uh, well, with the big he'll, scoop. He'll tell you that's just for looks. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. right. Uh-huh. And that in the slicks. What kind of carburetors are you running on that thing? Uh, two 750 Hollies. Two seven fifty. He <laughs> wonder why he gets eight miles to the gallon. Eight miles to the gallon. Well, we, now we know why. Well, he's got twenty four hundred miles on this engine, and uh, we were wondering twenty four thousand. What? Twenty four hundred. No, twenty four thousand. Is this a, it's almost thirty thousand? So this almost is a misprint. Thirty thousand miles on the engine. Okay. Yeah, it's almost. Yeah, that was twenty four hundred miles on the Pop Road Power Tour. Oh, I got you. So and you need were to getting put your glasses on. Yeah, maybe. I guess so. I mean, seven hundred and sixteen horsepower. But anyway, we were talking briefly before we got back on the air. Uh, we wanted to touch base, and and the trivia question earlier on the program was about something to do with your fuel cell. Now we got a call from Bob Wright. From Space City Cruisers says you've got to make Sonny talk about that fuel cell. So it's all yours, Sonny. Tell us about it. Well, me and me and Bob Wright were talking one day at a car show, and I had a red plastic fuel cell. And we both come up together with this stainless steel bow tie. So I had one made, but we didn't know that the sun hits it. It's like a magnifying glass. And I have leather inserts on my deck lid, and it catches them on fire like a magnifying. <laughs> they'll, they'll burn, I burned several up in there. So the, past. the reflection, reflection off the off the uh, it takes stainless a, it takes less than a minute to catch it on fire on a stainless steel tank. It's a polished stainless. Steel. <laughs> With the bow tie, don't emblem. polish it. Oh goodness! <laughs> so it actually caught fire. Right, caught the deck the deck lid inserts on fire. So are we still using the stainless steel tank, or what I do we do I to cure that? I close the deck lid when the sun's out. Ah, it's for night only. He left the trunk lid open. A nighttime fuel tank only. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that, that, what a great story that is. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Don, Mike, this guy's got stories is unbelievable, and uh, maybe perhaps in the future we can get him back on again to tell uh, the remaining story. He's got too many, I tell you. It, it, uh, this guy's awesome. It's, fascin- it's fascinating. How do you, how do you know? Uh, how do you know? <clears throat> well, it's a, a long story again. Uh, we'll make it as short as possible. First time I met Sonny Poteet was through the courtesy of Bob Wright of the Space City Cruisers. I was putting on a show, a uh, 59 Diner show, just to throw those guys a plug, but that was one of my first uh, shows. It was all classic cars. And uh, Bob Wright had come out with his, uh, he, he was telling me, well, I'm, you know, I'm from Santa Fe, t- Santa Fe. And it didn't register with me. I thought, Santa Fe, New Mexico? You drove all the way over here from Santa Fe to be in my car <laughs> show? I was very impressed. Down Highway 6, Santa yes, Fe. Yes, down yeah. Highway, Santa Fe, Texas. So, but anyway, the uh, the second show we had, well, he brings along his buddy, which happened to be Sonny Poteet in this uh, 55 Monster Chevy. Mm-hmm. And that's the first time I met Sonny, and uh, he's been talkative ever since I've met him. It hasn't changed a bit. He was uh, he participated in the Sealy Drag Race we had and uh, did some awesome door jamming, blowing off. Yeah, but he drives his car there. Yeah, that's yeah, the amazing oh, yes, part. Yes, he drove the Nifty 50s, what, a couple of weeks ago? You were, and you were asking me something, well, you know, could you park it back here? I said, no, you're going to bring it inside. But Sonny? That's it's awesome, and you know you've had this car what nineteen years now, right? Right. Okay, so Don, you've got a f- final question or so you'd like to ask this. Well, guy? Sonny, uh, wh- where can are you? Do you have? Do you go to races every weekend? How, do you schedule no, just, the just, stuff? It's just no, whatever. Just when I can, they have something special I can go to, and then somebody wants me to come out there and bring my car, and I go out and play around. I really don't. 
I really don't try to go out there and beat anybody. I just want to have a good time. And if okay. I beat if I meet somebody, I just I really don't want to outrun everybody, in which I can't. He's the Dick Clark of hot rodding. The Here Dick Clark of hot rodding. Yes, he is the oldest teenager, you know, in the hot rod <laughs> world. He's uh, yeah, who's been doing it since the 1940s. Yes. I love that. Well, well you know, it, this thing is addicting. If you're into cars, I mean, uh, if we were into 55 Chevys in the 50s, and we're still into 55 Chevys in the 2000s, uh, well, you know, that tells you a little bit about the. The love of the sport or the hobby, I guess you would call it. So, well, we sure appreciate you bringing uh, Sonny in. Yeah, it's Sonny, my great. pleasure. Sonny's come great. back anytime, anytime you want. No, let me. I will. Yeah, we because we, we enjoy <laughs> talking to you. We love the stories. And Randy, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll we'll take your video that you have on the fifty five. We're going to put it on our site. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one, uh, one other thing, Don, yes. real quick, mm-hmm. we want to remind our, our listeners out there: if you'd like to know more about Sonny Poteet, uh, spell his name S O N N Y. Last name is P O T E E T. You can go to his Facebook. It has a lot of information about Sonny Poteet, just in case. Awesome. There you go. And Nifty 50s tonight? I, you know, we're looking at the weather out there. It's not, you know, it depends on what Mother Nature wants to do this afternoon. Well, so how do you make the call? I mean, when, when it's you, very when, hard. When you, when yeah. you say, yes, we're going to do it, or no, we're not going to do it, how, how do people know? Well, normally when I say, yes, we're going to do it, the rains will come right at the last minute. <laughs> well, so besides that. <laughs> but uh, it is very hard. What do you do? Go to the Nifty 50s website? Yes, you go to the website, check the ticker tape running across the top of the screen that is a bulletin running on the screen right now saying it is pending. Okay. So as we, when we leave get, the uh, studios today, I will get out, examine, and see, and look at the forecast. And, and, and it's N-I-F-T-E-E. Right. We spell nifty like coffee with two E's. Okay. Drop, and then drop the Y, forget it exists, and spell it the way it sounds. N I F T double E. And then the number 50 with a double E and an S. Okay. So it's Nifty 50s. And we'll see you next weekend? You betcha. All right. Looking Randy Shannon and Sonny Poteet, thanks again for being with us. Hey, coming up, we've got uh, Troy Dixon with Houston Performance Driving. And uh, it's going to be a new weekly feature that we're going to start. And we're actually starting it this week. And he's going to be with us every week because we're going to go from uh, the classic muscle cars and the hot rods and the cruisers to all the latest stuff that's on the street today and on the on the strip and on the, the track. The exotics. The exotics as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. It doesn't Everything. have to be exotics, but I know that he's got the connections with the Ferraris and the, and the Lamborghinis as well. But while, we get, uh, while we get Troy in here, let me tell you about uh, In Wheel Time. We'll be very proud to present our In Wheel Time guests a free BG oil service with MOA along with BG Carbon Fighter 5. And yes, friends, you can get a free oil change, too. All you have to do is email your name, phone number, and zip code to info at inwheeltime.com, and you'll be entered to win. Next time you need a coolant flush, transmission, power steering, differential, or fuel service, be sure and ask for BG by name. BG products are used by the best dealers and service facilities around, including Classic Chevrolet in Sugarland, Colony One Automotive in Richmond, Texan Buick GMC in Humble, Luetta Automotive, locations throughout Houston, Spring Honda on I-45 North, Mack Hike Dodge on the North Freeway, and learn all about BG products at bgfindashop.com. Troy, thanks for staying with us for the three hours. We really appreciate you coming in today. We kept him awake. Yeah, and let, so Houston Performance Driving, it, it really isn't a club. It's kind of a clearinghouse uh, for everybody that is in all sorts of different clubs, and you kind of gather up everybody together and say, hey, you know, we're going to put on this event or we're going to come to that event. We've got a bunch of guys here who want to do this or do that. It's kind of uh, a forum. Yeah, a forum, so, so to speak. Exactly. And, you know, and, and I think Mike hit it earlier, you know, it's a network as well where uh, it's not just people coming on to the uh, – looking for events it's also uh shops you know advertising their products you know their packages their performance packages um and anything they do and then it's also people looking to go well where can i take my car to get this fixed or that fixed and it's just a great information source about everything going on in houston and houston area anything performance related let's talk about some of the cars that you that you you hang out with the guys that have a certain kind of car uh, you hang out with obviously Randy Shannon and the Nifty Fifties, but you also uh, have really a, a crux of guys, a bunch of guys and gals as well. Yeah, just think uh, that uh, have cars that basically are late model cars. A late model meaning anything in the past ten years. Am I uh, have I got it 
Right. And yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, not only have you got the the exotics that you were talking about, the Lamborghinis and the Ferrari guys, but you've also got the guys with the muscle Mustangs that they bought off the showroom the floor. Corvettes, go, the, the, the Camaros, Corvette, the you know, guys that, like that guys that have uh, actual cars that weren't muscle cars originally, but are starting to work on them and and are in different uh, stages of hot rotting. And you've got all of that entwined into Houston Performance Driving. Yeah, that, that's what makes up the uniqueness of our group and our community is that you do have a lot of different cars. It's not one chassis. It's uh, m- many chassis, but all chassis are, you know, um, relatively new and, you know, not, uh, you know, riced out, so to speak. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, was trying to, I was trying to put that gingerly. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, do you, do you, do you have uh, a lot of foreign cars as well? We do. Oh, it's uh, especially with like cars like, you know, the uh, Toyota Supra, the uh, Nissan GTR, the Porsches, Lamborghinis and Ferraris. You know, those are the new. But uh, it's not just straight line cars. It's road racing. Oh, it's things absolutely. Like that. It's, 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 it's all kinds of any, anything with four wheels in a seat pretty much. It's also autocross. Right. Um, so you guys have, have t- track days and stuff, don't you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I even instruct from time to time at Texas World Speedway, Houston Motorsports Ranch, um, and, you know, assist people. And then we host our own events. We jump on board with others, uh, help advertise and help their community grow through our community because we do, we pull in so now, many different Anything people. of interest to, to your members or the people that, that are in your group is what you're going to be in the middle of. Absolutely. Yeah. That, and that's just the way I like it. And, you know, it, I like to be in the middle of it. I like, I got such a uh, kick out of coordinating these events that I, just tried to start doing it more and more and more, and people seem to like it. So more and people ask me to do drag events, road course events, c- cruises to the, up through the National Forest, to Kima Boardwalk, Galveston Island, you know, Freeport, you know, up the coastal roads, Fun. things like that. Absolutely. And, you know, gather all the friends up, and then, you know, and it's a very social group, too, because we have dinner every Tuesday. And it's the, and it's the girlfriends and the wives, and they're all included Absolutely. in this. Absolutely. We actually encourage um, the guys or even the girls to bring out more and more people because it adds to our community and um, and especially here in Houston where beautiful women grow on trees. It's just great to have. <laughs> Did you know that they grow yeah, on trees? They do here. Yeah. They do. Just they walk, do at his house. Walk through the Galleria in his neighborhood. They do. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it, but it, it, it's su- it's such a good thing to have fast cars, beautiful women, and you know, a great group of guys that are all like minded and you know believe in a certain quality and a certain bar that they like to get to. all you need is a james coney island and i'm all over it <laughs> absolutely okay so for a guy that is uh, really not involved in any of this and wants to get into it how do they get into it how, do, how, how does a guy really get started well, i had a desire back when i bought the corvette to kind of uh, try out a, a club, and I went over to the San Jacinto Corvette Club and was welcomed in. Didn't know anything about clubbing or anything like that, and they welcomed me in just like I was in a twelve-step program. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know, just w- w- the best thing to do is obviously start by logging on the forum and getting on our Facebook, and just you know, when you see the feeds come through, especially on Facebook, you know, you'll, we post our events, and mm-hmm. you'll see, and we and we and we co- we try to coordinate all our events thirty days out. So yep. you get plenty of heads up time to see what's going on and, and base your schedule on it. Because some, some events are actually two days. And some are even three, you know, depending on like the track days and sure. things that we do. Sure. Well, I know that we've got a link to your website, HPD, Houston Performance Driving dot com. And um, I wanted to tell everybody that Troy is going to be with us every week. And we're going to talk about all sorts of stuff. You're going to be bringing his guests in like uh, – like Randy Shannon does yeah. with with, with uh, Sonny Poteet today, absolutely. And so we look forward to uh, learning more about the current, the current hot rodding craze, the uh, the performance craze, and and um, you know we might have a car we want to just tweak a little bit and uh, move it in that direction. And actually, we were kind of thinking that's really why that we got him in here, so yep. he can get us connected. We can have a fast car. That's right. It's Absolutely. all about the connections, isn't it? It, it is. Again, that goes right back to what Mike was saying earlier about just network, you know. And that was and that was the original idea when we first started was to almost be a Facebook for performance drivers, whether it be straight line, you know, drag strip, road coursing, autocross, street shows, um, you know, anything to that nature was the whole concept. And to bring the shops in, talk technical as well as uh, social with you. So basically we're going to see more Mustang and, and, and you know, Nissan GTR people than we are the people with the real hot Prius. 
Yeah, as a matter of fact, it was funny on the way <laughs> on the way Prius. here on the toll road, there was a guy driving a Prius like ninety miles an hour in and out of traffic, and I'm just went, sitting there that's going, that Don. And I'm going, late. it's a Prius. <laughs> hey. Yeah. The guy was ch- ch- checking out to see what kind of gas mileage you'd get on the tollway. <laughs> hey, Troy, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next weekend. Absolutely. Thanks, Thank Troy. You, gentlemen. I really appreciate really, your time. Appreciate hey, coming up, road trip and drive at home. We'll get you on the road with a destination made for driving. And a review of our cars of the week, the 2012 Infiniti G37 and the Acura RDX. You're tuned to In Wheel Time with Don and Mike on 1560 The Game. All hat and no cattle. That's a polite way of suggesting someone talks a good game but doesn't deliver. A caution not to fall for flash when what you really need is faithful. To see what something's made of before you put your trust in it. Take the Ram Heavy Duty, available with the proven 6.7 liter Cummins turbo diesel engine. It'll tow whatever you ask of it. And a five year, 100,000 mile promise that it'll keep towing every time you ask. There's a truck that's earned its reputation. Guts, glory, ram. Do not exceed towing ratings. See dealer for copy of Powertrain Limited Warranty. Ram is a registered trademark of Chrysler Group, LLC. IQ Auto Buyers is the smart way to sell your car. They buy cars, trucks, SUVs, even motorcycles in any condition. Had an accident, mechanical problems, car in bad shape, IQ buys wrecked and disabled cars. Call 713-456-3196 and don't stress over repairs. The process is easy and fast, so fast you could do it over your lunch hour. Call 713-456-3196. One of their friendly buyers will appraise your car, give you an instant, free, no obligation quote and pay you on the spot when they pick up the car fast efficient and they do all of the paperwork the process takes only 20 minutes and the towing is free iq auto buyers wants to buy your car truck or suv or motorcycle for top dollar whether you owe money lease or own outright iq can purchase your car so call them today iq auto buyers 713-456-3196 iq auto buyers the smart way to sell your We don't just make a performance sedan. We make the Cadillac CTS-V, the fastest production sedan in the world. We equipped the CTS-V with a pavement-peeling, 556-horsepower, supercharged V8. We didn't just engineer a brilliant suspension. We created a dual-mode magnetic suspension that reacts faster than the blink of an eye. We didn't just give it powerful brakes, we gave it six-piston Brembo brakes with locomotive-like stopping power. The Cadillac V-Series, the record-breaking CTS-V sedan, stunning CTS-V coupe, and audacious CTS-V wagon. We don't just make luxury cars, we make Cadillacs. Visit your Houston area Cadillac dealer or log on to HoustonAreaCadillac.com. There's only one show in Houston that gets your automotive wheels turning. The guys are bringing you the latest in automotive news, reviews, maintenance tips, and everything that will help you get down that road called life. Now, let's get back to the guys. Here they are, Mike Herzing and Don Armstrong. Yep, this is In Wheel Time with Don and Mike. Time now for our road trip. Music is really loud. Yeah, it is. I like it. Thank you. Time now for road trip and drive it home. Do we? Oh, he's only got thirty seconds. He can't talk to us. Let's get him on the line. Bart, Bart Bonham with American Dream Vacations. What are you doing that you've only got thirty seconds to talk to us? <laughs> Man, we are crazy busy today, Don. How you doing? Well, I'm good. So you just hang in there with me. I know that you did some research on uh, South Padre Island as our road trip of the week. I did, I did. South Padre is a great place to go, especially with an RV. I mean, it's another beach location, but they've got so much to do there. You can go to Schlitterbahn if you want to go with the kids. They have a park. They have putt-putt golf. They've got everything you can imagine plus the beach. And you can get there with uh, one of your motorhomes or a travel trailer. 
Absolutely. You can take either one out there. There's plenty of room. There's a state park. There's uh, plenty of local parks. There's resort parks. And I would imagine that we could probably uh, just Google southpadreisland.com and we could find out everything that there is to do down there. And let me, let me just tell everybody, it's a 370-mile trip from Houston. It takes about six hours down to get down there, so it, it's a haul. You just go right straight down yeah. 59. In gas, if you get 25 miles to the gallon, which I know that you don't, Bart, but if you, in gas, if you get 25 MPG, it's going to cost you about 42 bucks in gas to get down there. But it's a great uh, weekend vacation. Or you can also just uh, you can go for an entire week as well. And if we get one of your uh, RVs or travel trailers, we can stay really cheap. Oh, yeah. You're driving your hotel with you, so you're taking it with you. You don't have to check in anywhere and check out at a certain time. You can stop anywhere along the way. Heck, you can even go to Brownsville if you want. It's uh, about 45 minutes away. And you don't have to buy your meals. You can cook them in the camper. You can microwave them. You can convention oven them. You can uh, cook them on a stovetop, flat grill. We have it all. Well, I want to know, do you have any vehicles left down there for us to take camping? i tell you what, it's getting really tight uh, for July, but uh, we can always find something for somebody. Okay, so how do, how do we get a hold of you, and where are you? Well, you can call us at 281 281- Eight seven two nine two zero zero, or you can locate us online at americandreamvacations.net. And we are just north of the Beltway on I-45 between Rankin and Greens in the Greens Point area. Bart, it's always great to talk to you. I know you're busy. You go back to it, and we'll check back with you next week. Sounds good. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, Thank Bart. you, Bart Bonham with American Dream Vacations. If you want a diesel pusher, he's got those. Um, and it's- Class C. Uh, These class. vehicles are owned by individuals right. that don't use them all it's the like time. It's like renting a timeshare. So they send them over yes. to American Dream Vacations in BART, and BART leases them out on the t- days that they're not using their vehicles. It would be great for a Troy Dixon type of Absolutely. guy. Absolutely. Yeah, you exactly. Don't wanna, you want a motorhome or, or, or a camper or a travel trailer or a pop-up, but you don't want to own one all the time. Right. So this is perfect. You can go and, and split it. Or if you happen to own one already and you're not using it all the time, take it over there. They'll take care of it. They have insurance. It's it's great. And, They'll and lease they it out you. for you yeah. when you don't use it. It's yeah. kind of like having a cabin, and you don't use it all the time. You just lease it out when you're not. Timeshare, but ooh, pays for itself. Use that word. Hey, let's drive it home, shall we? A review of our new cars of the week. Mikey's got the 2012 Infiniti G37. Why don't you tell us about yours first? I'm excited you want me to, about You want me to tell them about yeah, mine? Okay, well, I had the Acura RDX, X. which is their small SUV. Okay. All right. It uh, goes up against things like the Audi Q5, the BMW X3, and the Lexus RX350. Okay, those are its competitors. Uh, first of all, let me tell you, I had the all-wheel drive tech version. So you're going to pay more for the oil all-wheel drive, and you're going to pay more for the tech uh, package that goes along with it. And it's an accessory package. It includes the navigation, voice recognition, uh, rear-view mirror, uh, AccuLink, AccuraLink communication system with real-time traffic and weather. Uh, great sound system, a, a big 10-speaker job with AM, FM. Uh, it also has DVD, CD, DTS, uh, ALS. PMS. PMS, yes. it's got that too. So all that stuff. GPS is linked. Uh, dual zone climb. It's got all that stuff on it. So between the all-wheel drive and the tech package that it came with. It adds $5,000 to the base price of thirty four. So we're looking at a forty grand SUV here, which is a little steep. But, hey, this is luxury, extraordinaire. It has an absolutely fabulous interior. The only thing that I really am still not uh, convinced that I like is that beak that Acura puts on the front end of their cars. Although I have to tell you, they have revised it. It's a little bit s- smaller now, so it's not in-your-face beak-ish. Right. But it's still a beak. Inside, as I mentioned, luxurious, wonderfully soft, perforated leather, easy to reach gauge, gauge, cl- gauge cluster. But what I did not like is the hard to use driver interface. And I had this problem with the Honda Pilot. It comes from the same company, Honda, obviously. And it was confusing. It had one of those do all knobs, kind of like a, a joystick, if you will, in the middle of the of the uh, center stack, it controlled all of the inputs. So to change the station, you had to move to a different screen with the input nabs. I, I don't know what the deal is over there. I think that they're trying to over-engineer it or something, but it would be really nice if they would just go to a touch screen and make it simpler. And the U.S. car makers have really zeroed in on that. They've got it. You don't have to get the manual out. It's intuitive. 
But um, that's one of my pet peeves with this thing. And it just, everybody's going to this iPad thing. Cadillac has just come out with it. It's very simple to use. You use a finger swipe to change screens. That's the way things are going, and they, they really need to get on with it. Engine couldn't beat it. Engine smooth and powerful, huge attribute in the, in the luxury class vehicle. And, it's, and it did get the advertised 22 combined MPG. does have paddle shifters, but I don't know why you'd want that in an SUV. Uh, it comes in two-wheel and four-wheel drive. No need to waste the money on the four-wheel drive here unless you make frequent winter trips to the snow belt. As far as the star rating is concerned, let's give it four out of five stars. That would be the Acura RDX. What do you got? I had the uh, Infiniti G37 Coupe. And it's the IPL, which is Infinity Performance Line version. It's just like the the G thirty seven sedan. Is wonderful. It's one of my favorite cars. This is the coupe version. It's a two seater with a two small back seats. I'm giving it four and a half stars. I loved it. Okay, so are we out of time? We're out of, We're time. Out of time. Hey, thanks for joining us today here on In Wheel Time with Don and Mike. We'll see you next week here on fifteen sixty The Game. Always wondered what it would be like to take the family camping in an RV? Wonder no more as American Dream Vacations has all types and sizes of RVs for rent. Whether you'd like one for an overnight stay at Huntsville State Park or a one-month road trip across America, American Dream Vacations has an RV that fits your needs and your budget. From one convenient location on I-45 North just outside